Welcome everyone to the Credit Concept Podcast. I am your host, credit coach Nicole Scott, and in today's episode, I have a very special guest, and we are gonna be talking about the top 200 banks that you can get a bag from. So there are no excuses. If you can't use one bank, they're gonna we're gonna give you 200 options for you to get funding from these top rated banks. Now this is the good part that we've all been waiting for, the top 100 credit unions. Now, credit unions are by far my favorite source of banking. And before I really learned about credit, I really didn't understand the difference. I really didn't know any better. I obviously banked with you know the, the top banks, Chase, Bank of America, because that's what I see on every street corner. So when I wanted to go open up a bank account, I just walked right in. But what people fail to realize is a lot of places you can call and open up a bank account right over the telephone these days. Technology is amazing. They'll make you upload your driver's license and what other forms of verification right online. So if you don't have a branch close to you, don't let that be an excuse. Take action, give them a call, apply over the phone. If they need you to send anything in, you can mail it in. And if they have to have you visit a branch, you can make a trip to a branch. But hey, in this day and age, I don't see why we would have to go into a branch when there's so much technology out there. So let's get into it. Top 100 credit unions coming up no. now. Ah, are you guys ready? I don't know if they're ready for this. I don't know. I don't know. It better be if they're not ready. They better get ready. Man, you better get ready because if you knew better, you would do better. Let's go, <laughs> Navy Fed. My number one. <laughs> you guys know I love me some. This Navy is her Fed. absolute favorite bank right here, or credit union. Let me rephrase I, that. I know, and it's she like she loves I, it. I try not to so. be biased, like. I try not to be like, oh, I just love Navy Federal because it's the number one credit union. No, I really love Navy Federal because they have helped me out. They opened up the door <clears throat> for me. Like they raised the bar for me. And if you guys haven't like, you know, if this is your first time visiting my channel and like learning about me a little bit about my history is before Navy Federal, the highest credit card that I've ever had in my entire life, I think was like $3,500 or something like that. And then when I was rebuilding my credit, the highest credit card that I got was like 1500 bucks. I, I was stuck in that 500 under a thousand dollar range for like two years. I was so frustrated. Right. And then I finally joined a mentorship, learned how to get into Navy federal, learned how to get all these credit products with Navy Federal. And now I have three credit cards with them, two of which are over $30,000 credit card limit. And I was able to refinance one of my auto loans with them back in, let's see, this was probably 2020. I refinanced a Dodge Charger with them that I had with GM Financial and GM Financial will approve anybody because obviously I got it at the dealership, right? So they usually approve people starting at like a 580. But <laughs> just know you are going to pay for that, okay? They're not doing you any freaking favors. <clears throat> you are going to pay accordingly. At that oh, yeah. time, <clears throat> of course, I wasn't educated. All I heard was the word approved. And where do I sign? Okay, if I'm driving off the lot today, where do I sign? At a 20 something percent interest rate. I think it was like a 22% interest rate or something crazy. But when I refinanced with Navy, I got an interest rate of a 4.89% with a 670 credit score. And that saved me over $200 a month on my car payment. <laughs> like, that was just money being flushed down the toilet to interest. Okay. So, you know, Navy Fed it's very, is it's, it's, it's 
And shout out the Navy, <clears throat> shout out the Navy Federal for you know putting her in a position to save some money like that. Man, because, over well, the first, years, you know, it just thousands. Right, you put yourself in position for them to be able to look out for you. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, once you educated yourself, once you knew a little more about what was going on in the credit space, and um, you knew where to go and how to how to maneuver. Yeah, and um, that was through mentorship. Yep. So it's like we don't know at all. You know, I never knew about credit. I literally like 2016, 2017. Yeah, I knew nothing about credit before that. Mm hmm. Yeah, what all I know, I was told never use credit. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, you're not taught about credit. So there's like, there's so much mystery. And yeah. it's like, how do I navigate this whole thing? You know, it was so confusing and overwhelming at first. Like, oh my God. I was like, I'm never going to learn this. I don't even know how to read a credit report. Like, this is horrible. How am I ever going to do this? But, that's it's true. anything that you don't know about is intimidating at first, but right. once you start diving in and right. getting your feet wet and start learning, it's like, oh, that's not so bad after all. Like, what was and I? And that's how, like a quick backstory on me. Um, not to go on too much of a tangent, but I think it's important for for people to understand. Absolutely. So for me, um, <clears throat> I went to college, did that whole thing. Um, graduated from college, um, University of South Florida here in Tampa. That's how I got to Tampa, Florida. Mm. Um, but during my time in college, a friend, a buddy of mine, we started throwing parties. And um, uh, excuse me. Once we graduated, we had to make a decision because we got pretty good at it, and it was making a lot of money. So, like promoting parties and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So we got into that and we both graduated at the same time. So it was like, do we want to, you know, go the traditional route or do we want to see if we could take this to more of the local level, you know, in the city? And of course we young, we like, we're going to just, we want to see what this is about. Yeah. We've always like this. And fast forward, long story short, it just took off. You know what I'm saying? It took off. We became very successful in the Florida market. And um, in the nightlife. And um, we did that forever. But I wanted to buy a house around 2015, 2016. Knew nothing about credit, obviously. Mm -hmm. I go, you know, talk to whoever. And they like, what is your credit score? And I'm like, what? What is that? <laughs> like that type of thing. And um, so, you know, they break it all down to me. And at that point, I was like, if I don't know nothing about this, Clearly, nobody around me knows nothing about this. Yeah. So going through that process, you know, I start studying up on it, YouTube, university, and um, until I found me a mentor. And from there, I was like, I developed a passion for it. You know what I'm saying? To the point where now I was able to get out of the nightlife and just focus more on the on the financial side of things, the credit side of things. Mm -hmm. And um, just started helping people around me. And once I seen I could help myself and then help those around me, I was like, I could turn this into a business. Yeah. And that's what I've been doing ever since. That's how I got into the credit space. And I bet there is a ton of people that you've <laughs> met throughout your journey in the nightlife that you can help out as well. So it's like yep. when you offer multiple services, people are going to keep coming back to you. They're going to refer people to you because they know, Hey, this person can actually change your life. This person can help you because when you have challenged credit, sometimes you just feel like doomed. Like there's nothing you can do. Like I'm just effed. No, you're not. Okay. It takes time. Yes. But as long as you have the funds to invest, you're willing to take action. You're willing to learn it. You, there's, you know, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. I right. can for you. Okay. And a lot Until of the times, a lot of the times people don't even really necessarily have bad credit. Right. Yeah. They just never really looked at their credit profile. Mm -hmm. to know What's going on. Yeah. They get a hint of it. They, you know, they get a glimpse of it. And it's like, Damn, you don't even really have bad credit. You just need to build your profile up. Yeah, you just need to build your profile good. up or you just need to adjust 
some spending habits on your credit cards. Like if you are going to spend, you have to make sure that you pay either weekly or you pay it off five business days prior to the billing closing date. And if you're not sure what that is, look at your credit card statement. When is the last day of the billing cycle? Because it'll say this billing cycle is from this date to this date. The last day of your billing cycle, which might be the 25th, you know, you got to make sure that by the 20th of every month, don't count any, you know, holidays or weekends that you pay that off in full. And most people, I just tell them, pay that weekly, you know, get into the habit of whenever you spend, you pay it back use, because you don't spend like what you debit, don't have. Use it like a debit card. Yes, use it like a debit card and build like it up. But don't let that balance report. Like I just had a client get a brand new Capital One card because he's just starting out. He's got a 700 credit score because, you know, we've added trade lines and you got right. the negative items removed. But, you know, you got to start building your own credit. And as soon as he gets his, his Capital One card, it's got a 50% utilization. So the credit card is only 300 bucks. That's not a lot of wiggle room. So I mean, you no really room. need to make sure that you're paying it as soon as you spend it. Yeah. So, but back to Navy Federal, uh, you know, we like to give Navy. you as much info as possible. So mm. that way you guys can learn with us and grow with us and, you know, become a part of our community that has like-minded individuals that's passionate about credit and wants to learn credit so you can elevate yourself to the next level, whether that's to buy a home, start a business, whatever you plan to do in your life, chances are nine times out of 10, it's going to require a good credit profile. Okay. Let's just be honest, <clears throat> but I can go on for hours about Navy federal. I'm not <laughs> Okay, I've got go, Navy go Federal them to look videos. at your video. Go yes. tell them to look at the video you did on Navy Federal and on your your Instagram page. You got you know a bunch of different short forms. Oh yeah, of, of breaking down Navy Federal, so yep. they can definitely go check Absolutely. you out and learn more about Navy for sure. Yes, and I'll leave the links below. So if you guys want to check out those videos, you certainly can. Uh, let's move on to the second largest credit union, which is State Employees credit union. Okay. And this is more for people that are in the state of North Carolina. I've seen this, uh, bank on a lot of people's credit profiles that I've worked with in the past. And, you know, I personally don't have them, but they've had a tremendous amount of accounts with them. So this is a good example of a relationship bank. Once you get in there and get a credit card, then you get an auto loan, you get a personal loan and you can get just more and more credit products because mm. they already have a relationship with you. And another quick gem uh, uh, as to why we like credit unions more so than your national banks is because a lot of the times with not all credit unions, but a lot of credit unions, they will give you multiple products with one inquiry. Mm -hmm. Yep. So when I say multiple products, I mean credit cards or lines of credit or auto, you know, just the different types of of um <clears throat> things you can get from a credit bureau and yep. and and a lot of them you can use one hard anchor yes and a lot of them are only going to pull your credit from one credit bureau versus like capital one where if you apply for a credit card you're going to get a hard pull on each credit bureau experian equifax and transunion usually with credit unions they're only going to pull you from one credit bureau. Uh, state employees, I believe they are an Experian bank, but I could be wrong. I'm not 100% sure on who I they say, pull. I think, I think you're about right. I want to okay. I, wanna, I, wanna, I, I think so. Now, Navy, they we talked about them before. They're TransUnion primarily for the personal side, Experian for the business side. But like King Finance Man said, they used to be an Equifax bank. So you still might see Equifax sprinkled on in there. So, um, you know, with state employees, yeah, I think they are an Experian bank as well. So if you guys have any experience with these banks, again, leave it in the comments. Let us know what your experience has been so we can share. Um, next up is Pinbed. <laughs> 
Pentagon Federal Credit Union. I love PinFed too. If you can't get into Navy Fed for whatever reason, you can get into PinFed with a $5 donation to the charity on their website. So I highly recommend PinFed. They're another bank that has really great credit products, fairly low interest rates on their auto loans. They give out high limits. I had a client, he has, I think three credit cards with PinFed. 20k 20k and 15k so he got what was that 45 55 thousand dollars in available credit that he can add to his credit profile and what that does is just raises the bar for other places that you plan to get credit on in the future because if you already have multiple 20k cards and you go and apply for another credit union, chances are they're probably going to match that or maybe even elevate that to the next level. That's true. And on the business side, if you got high limit personal credit cards, you know, on the business side, they might two, three, four or five times that. So yeah, they can definitely five X that on the business side. So that's why when I say it just opens up doors for you, it literally opens up the doors for funding. So I'm not going to go over all of the different bullet points. Those are for you guys to just, you know, kind of read at your leisure. And if you do want a copy of this slideshow, you're going to have to subscribe in the bottom links and I can give you the presentation for free. Okay. Right now, at least we will be charging for this in the future, but if you are watching this video within the first three days of it dropping, we are going to give you the slideshow for free. So that way you can review it at your leisure and have all of these banks. After three days, you are going to have to pay a small fee for the slideshow. Okay. But you know what happens? Early birds get the worm. All right. Action takers are money makers. That's right. Let's go. <laughs> uh, Boeing Employees Credit Union. This is one of my personal favorites. I mean, I love all these credit unions, to be honest, but I, I like BECU. Okay, this is a great bank. They have a ton of freaking money to go get a bag from. You can see right here, $28.9 billion okay. with a B <laughs> in assets, okay? and they were established to serve employees of the Boeing company, okay? So again, if you have the means to join them, please do so, okay? You can go right to their website. They have a ton of credit products. I am not, I believe Boeing is Experian as well. I, I don't wanna say, they're definitely not Equifax. I don't think they do TransUnion. So if you have any experience with who Boeing pulls from, leave it below. I believe they're Experian. Some of these banks I've had for a really long time and all I right. don't have any inquiries left on my credit report because I get them all cleared off. Now, if you are disputing inquiries, dispute them before the account hits your profile. Okay. Don't, the first days. Yes. Don't dispute. Just do it right away. As soon as you right have five Yep. Just go right ahead and dispute the anchors right then and there. Yep. Get them off. Because once the account's on, it could cause some issues. So right. there you it have it. It hinder you from, because if you rack up enough of them, you know, three, four or five of them, it's going to hinder you with, cre especially credit card funding. Um, yeah. A lot of these places are anchor sensitive when it comes to credit cards. Oh, yeah. So you definitely, if you're going to apply for these, um, you know, wherever you're getting them from, definitely dispute those inquiries. Mm. You know, a day or two after you apply, if not the same day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you can't do it yourself, just hit up one of us or somebody like us to get it done for you. Because yeah. you don't want the inquiries to be the reason you're getting denied for funding as well. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, well, how do I dispute it? Call, pick up the phone, call them, let them know you have an unauthorized inquiry in your profile and you want it deleted. Okay. It's that simple. It's literally that simple. It's literally that simple. Okay. I know lies literally that. And again, how, how do King Finance men say action takers are money makers? Yes, you got to be about that action. You got to be about that action. Got to schools be. first federal credit union. Have you mm -hmm. heard of schools? Do you guys have schools out I, there? We don't have this. I, I haven't really heard of this. One. Okay, See, I'm, so yeah, I'm learning this stuff is, right now. Folks. Yeah, See? this is a huge credit union out one. here. Uh, we have a ton of branches. Now it was funded for school employees or like 
employees of actual like school districts, right. but right, 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 anyone right. can join. So if you have a school's first federal credit union, I would recommend it because look at assets right here. $28.6 billion in assets. Hello. The more assets a bank has, the bigger bag they have to give you. Okay. And again, relationship banks, you have to understand credit unions and banking relationships. Okay. How to date your bank auto pay. I mean, you have to have everything on auto pay, but you need to have direct deposit. Okay. Even if it's 10%, 15% of your check, you need to have direct deposit set up to your checking account and you need to make sure that all of your credit obligations are on auto pay. Okay. Make sure that happens. You can never, ever afford to get a late payment and you want to make sure that you have the best relationship that you're building while you're dating your bank. Okay. You always want to date your bank before you ask them out on a date. When you ask them out on a date, you want them to say yes, just like that credit application. Okay. Or your bank. Date your bank. Date okay. your bank. Date your bank. And again, when you're dating, we're not monogamous. We we want right. to see who is going <laughs> to give us the best value, the best exactly. bang for our buck, right? All right, exactly. let's move on to Golden One. This is Golden another California uh, credit I'm gonna have union. To get here, um... I'm gonna have to get me a foreign entity for California. Oh yeah, they got we got a lot of good banks out here. I'm saying some some good stuff out there right now. Yes, and you know it's funny because Golden One, uh, one of the first clients that I worked with, he had a pretty decent profile. He just needed a little bit of cleaning up, and I was able to get him a twenty five thousand dollar credit card with Navy Federal, and we were able to get a twenty five thousand dollar. A personal loan with golden one. And this is someone that didn't have any credit pretty much. He had a relationship with golden one and he had been banking with them since he was like 18 years old and off the rip, they gave him a $25,000 personal loan. And, um, I think Navy federal kind of set that bar because when he got the credit card with Navy Federal, you know, that's when they were giving like $25,000 cards to everybody, right? And then all of a sudden, Golden One gives him $25,000 too. So, you know, right. comparable wow. credit. Goes to show. Yeah. They matter. Relationships matter. Yes. Like you said, this gentleman didn't have the, the, the thickest credit profile, but he did have a relationship with the bank mm -hmm. and started building his um profile up with other banks remember we're dating as many banks as we can to bring us the most value so one of his girlfriends gave him twenty five thousand. Yes. so now the other one over here said hey i gotta i gotta at least match that yeah i gotta at least match that because what do i look like not giving you what they did you know we want to show you some love too I, so we want your business mm-hmm remember banks want to give you the bag. Okay. They really want to, that's how they make money, but you gotta know you can't fumble the bag. Okay. Don't fumble because once you fumble, it's really hard to come back from that. Okay. We want to keep it going because we're, we're trying to buy homes and properties right. and things that are going to be, you know, in our lives for generational wealth, for you know, um, you want to leave <clears throat> your kids with land. I'm Problems. And that's why credit is so important. So credit, again, is the core, is the foundation. Mm -hmm. So you can then give yourself the opportunity to get funding, get money, get the bank's money to then go buy assets, like she just said, mm -hmm. so we can, you know, nurture and pass on down the line. You know what I'm saying? Land, property, whatever it may be. You may have a, a, a crazy idea that just goes berserk mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but it all starts with your personal credit and getting your finances in order and then just building out that portfolio from there so yeah personal not credit is mention, the foundation like, of it all. absolutely it's the foundation not to mention but you need to be teaching your children about credit imagine if we were all educated as young adults about credit oh you know as teenagers as preteens if we were super educated about credit like i've like, I think about that sometimes. 
I would be so much further along if I was educated about credit properly. But no, they don't. They don't teach us it. So we have to make sure that our children understand about credit. So when they turn 18, they already got a 700 credit score because we've added them to our cards as authorized users because we have excellent credit. We're basically letting our children inherit our credit. So that way, you know, in their early 20s, they can start buying property even earlier than that. But generally 21 and up, um, you can start buying the properties. That's what we want, right? The possibilities are really endless, to be honest with you. And I tell people all the time, that's what credit affords you. It's just opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You may have a 750 credit score and you don't know what you really want to do or how you want to do it. And then you never know. Something may just fall on your lap or a friend of yours may invest in something, whatever it may be. But you're ready for the opportunity when it presents itself. Yeah. Because your credit profile is where it needs to be. Exactly. You want to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Just because you have a 750 credit score doesn't mean that you have to do something right now. But maintaining that is most important. That's what the banks look at. If you're able to maintain, you're not a risk. They want to give you the bag. Okay. And especially as your your credit profile ages, that just makes it even better. Yep. Like fine wine. Fine wine. Your credit profile is just like fine wine. That's right. It gets better with age. (laughs) (laughs) Alliant Credit Union. I have Alliant. They are great. I don't, I have one of their cards sitting around here somewhere. I have so many banks now. It's hard to like keep up with it. I literally had to create a tracking log for all of my financial institutions because I have so many of them, but Alliant is a very popular one. They are another one that is known for giving out higher limits because look at their assets, $19 billion in assets. These are all very strong banks based on their asset size. So you won't have issues like Silicon Valley bank did, uh, you know, just recently and everyone was freaking out. These banks are very well established and they can afford to give out a lot of money because when they lend out money, they're making money, okay? And they're helping us, but at a lower interest rate. Do you guys have a lion out there? We don't have a lion out here. Okay. Yeah, I've seen a lot of branches out here in California and they were originally established to serve the United Airline employees, but Mm -hmm. now anyone can join. So you don't have to, you know, be an airline employee, but you still get a lot of the benefits. I believe it's like a small donation that you have to do similar to like pin fed, but it's Uh, that's pretty much the common theme with a lot of these credit unions. Now, um, if they're not fully open, you can join, um, some sort of council or some or make sort of donation and you can pretty much, um, you know, gain enrollment. Yeah. Yep. That's what a lot of these uh, banks are doing. And it's smart because look at their asset size like this. These are the top 10 banks based on their asset size. So these top 10, it's not because I just picked them out of a random hat. No, these are the top 10 based on their assets because they are the strongest. Navy Fed isn't number one because they're just my personal favorite. No, they're number one because that's what the facts say. They are the number one. And these are the top 10 credit unions based on their asset. If you're not able to join Navy Federal because you don't qualify, sometimes there's a workaround, but if it's a no-go, these other banks, you do not need to have any sort of affiliation. You can make that $5 donation or whatever it is and get your foot in the door. America First Credit Union. Now, this is another one that's a really popular credit union. And a lot of people don't talk about America First Credit Union. I don't think I've ever seen a video on it either, but they have a ton, $18.3 billion in assets, and they have a lot of different locations. You don't need to necessarily go into a branch with a lot of these banks. You can call over the phone, do everything online and over the phone. So that way you can get your account established. So with this bank, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. If you feel like, Hey, 
I want to check out this bank, just head over to their website. See if it's going to be a good fit for you. I personally love credit unions that offer both personal and mm -hmm. business accounts. Unfortunately, PinFed is mainly on the personal side. Um, no. But all, most of these other banks are on both, you know, so... If they got to get with a program, that's I point. know, I know. Obviously, they're great, doing something it is a right. Great they just got to get, like, come on. Yeah, I wish they would because they give such great products on the right. personal side. They do. And clearly they have the assets to yeah, do it. Yeah, they so. have the assets to back it. So, you know, it's, it's just about, I guess, you know, whatever works best for them. But I wish they would. I know, I wish they would. First Tech. This is one that is really popular. I have First Tech as well. Do you guys have First Tech out there? We don't have it. We don't. Yeah, have we. I, that just it kind of shows like we have so many banks out here just in California. It's crazy the amount of banks that you can <laughs> see if you really look. Like I never really paid attention until I got into credit. But once I did, I was like, there are so many different banks. And mind you, I was that person like years ago that had issues opening up bank accounts, but I couldn't figure out why. And come to find out, it was literally like a, a charge that I had got from Chase. And when I straightened everything out with Chase, it was less than $200. And that made me able to open up bank accounts again. So... That's why I tell you guys, you got to check your check systems report right. because sometimes you'll have old accounts that have like closed down. You don't remember what's going on and it's preventing you. Even if it's $2, $10, $15, if you have any amount listed on your check systems report, you're probably going to get declined until you get that cleared up. Okay. We'll Just get saying. declined. If those banks are, are definitely going to run check systems, you will be declined. Yeah. Right. And most of these banks do run check systems. Navy right. Federal uses early warning, but that's not to say that they might not use check systems in the future. But right now they use early warning. So you definitely want to check that if you have any issues. Um, and Golden One, they are very, um, I guess you can say, if you've had issues in the past, they're welcoming. So they are a, they you, you know, kind of yes, amazing. they work with people that are looking to get a fresh start. They are a fresh start bank as well. So first tech, that's another one. They have a number of different credit products, but they're up there 17 billion in assets. So they definitely have the bag to give mountain America credit union, 17 billion in assets. Come on, come on. I mean, these, these banks got the money. Okay. You know, 25,000 to them is nothing. Okay. They got billions of dollars and you guys are complaining that you can't get approved for funding. No more. Okay. Make sure you guys have liked the video. Make sure that you guys have shared the video because this is the information that you need to know. If you knew better, you would do better. Let's get into the rest of these um, top 100 credit unions. We're not going to list, we're not going to name all of them on these lists, but just kind of go over some of the ones. And again, these are based on assets. So here are the assets right here. Um, and I kind of just did like a breakdown for you guys where their headquarters is at what their assets are, their asset growth versus the prior year, how many branches they have, how many states that have branches, how many employees they have, and how many customers they have. So 11 is one that I've actually never heard of. Randolph yeah. Brooks uh -huh. Federal Credit Union, it's in Texas. But look at that, 16 billion in assets. This is crazy. It's huge. And, and just think about how big they are in terms of assets. And we've never even heard of them. Never even heard of them. So if you are in Texas, um, they it looks like they are just a Texas bank because they just have uh, branches in one state, but they have 64 branches um, out of Live Oak, Texas almost 17 billion in assets. They've grown 8% in just a year. They have millions of customers. So that's that's a great bank for you Texans out there. Suncoast, we were talking about that earlier. 
That's mm. uh, in your neck of the woods. That's the woods. number 12. Number 12 out of the top 100. That's crazy. <clears throat> Suncoast, that, that's another one that has, you know, with a lot of the credit unions, very, very low interest rates. Mm -hmm. very yeah. Low interest. Um, yeah. One, I have a, a auto loan from them right now. And um, I got it when the interest rates was lower than they are now. Of course, right. But I think two or three percent. That's amazing. Yeah, I was so thankful I got interest rates for my autos years ago. And now it's like all my autos are under 5%. Most of them are at three and the highest one is the 4.89 one, but Hey, I'll right. take it, you know, because the going interest rate right now is between six and 8%. So anything under 10 is good. Yeah. Some of my other favorites, Beth page is a really good one. San Diego County credit union, Lake Michigan Credit Union, Digital Federal Credit Union, that's DCU. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so that one's super popular. <clears throat> Look at DCU. They've had a 10.5% growth in the last year. And so has San Diego County Credit Union. These are the credit unions you guys want to be joining, especially if you're not able to join Navy Federal. They've grown 10% right. in the last year. That means this is where you need to be. They're growing. They're giving out more money. They have more money to lend. They have every credit product that you want. And guess what? Most of these, like for sure, San Diego County, you can do the pledge loan with San Diego County Credit Union as well. So the pledge loan is basically a secured loan. Doesn't cost you a hard inquiry. And you are using it to build credit. It's reporting your on-time payments to all three credit bureaus helping you not only build your credit, but build your relationship with that bank as well. So, and PinFed does a pledge loan. I actually did a video where it has like 10 different banks that do pledge loans. So make sure to watch that. I'll leave the link below. Mm -hmm. But these are some great options for you guys. Um, let's move on here to 21 through 30. Idaho Central Credit Union coming in at 21. Wow. 13.5%. That's some, that's some, that's the biggest number I've seen so far. And that shows why they're number 21 star one. I don't think that I would recommend them because they <laughs> have a negative growth asset in the last year. So they're a little bit down. So I would not go with a bank that would have a negative asset growth just because I'm looking for banks that are flourishing that are growing because that means that as soon as I get my foot in the door, I can increase my credit limits over time. So if I only get 10 K to start with, uh, guess what? Every three to six months, I'm asking for a credit line increase through the app if possible, because most of the times if, um, a bank will allow you to ask for a credit line increase through the app, they can use that same hard pull that they have on file. It might not always cost you a hard pull. So that's why I always say, if you're asking for a credit line increase, do it through the app. <clears throat> but yeah, a lot of these are some great numbers. Wings Financial Credit Union and Patelco Teachers, Teachers Federal Credit Union. Dang, these are some great credit unions, dude. Delta Community, that one's in Atlanta, Georgia. That one has a negative growth, looks like. But I've heard great things about them. So, you know, it kind of just depends. But you definitely want to look for ones that credit unions that are, you know, got a, a good growth here. Here's 31 through 40, Space Coast. That one I start, I'm starting to hear a lot more positive that's, that's things about. With us. Yeah, I actually have an account with them. Um, so Space Coast has been pretty good so far. 14.9% um, no, no asset growth. And a, and a, t a, a quick jump on Space Coast. Um, they won't even allow you to apply for any of their credit products until you've been with them either 60 or 90 days. I forget which one off the top of my head. Wow. But they make you wait. 60 to 90 days before they even allow you to apply for any other credit products. Yeah. I mean, I think people should have that rule of thumb anyways, because again, 
we want to date the bank before we just yeah, like that. ask them to marry us. You know what I mean? You want to date, you want to build up that relationship. You want to allow them to get to know you before you just hop right into asking them for a credit product. Right. And this goes to show like, it's not just like we don't just tell you this to waste our breath like this is the concept this is the plan that you right. need to have with not only navy federal but all of these banks especially credit unions you need to get open your bank account get a direct deposit percentage start starting to flow so they can see that you're getting frequent deposits and then after 90 days apply for the credit product of choice now, obviously, when you apply for credit products, you want to make sure that your credit cards have a zero balance. And if you can have the most amount of money that you have on hand in that bank account so they can see, I don't really need the money. I'm just asking for it. And if you tell me, yeah, cool. If you tell me no, whatever. But they don't want to give people money who look like they need money. They want to give people money who don't look like they need it. So we can't be out here on the streets looking thirsty to these banks. Okay. You have to look good on paper. Police and fire, federal credit union, that's another one. 7% growth. Man, look at this. Broadview federal credit union, 33.5% asset growth wow wow that is amazing okay uh so if you are out in the new york area you definitely want to check out broadview federal credit union they seem to be doing exceptionally well so that's exciting right there man let's see here summit credit union i've had one client in wisconsin and I, I, it's funny because they had Summit Credit Union and look at that 23% growth. That is amazing. Amazing. Connecticut. That's, that's another one that I've heard a lot more about. This is out here in California, only a 1% growth, but I'll tell you some of these smaller credit unions are gems because they have the money to give. They have the money. Look, they've got over six almost seven billion in assets no connecticut is a good bank actually um i actually heard of that one um and a couple of my clients out there um your way um got some funding from them That's nice big, look big, at midland uh mid mid florida credit union and mid florida a credit union that's been around for a long time um and that's one similar to the schools one okay for, um, educators yeah. So, um, yeah, Mid Florida is a pretty good credit union. Lots of great options here for you guys <clears throat> to start, you know, dating it and building that relationship. Again, waiting 90 days and then applying for something, whether you need to get an auto loan, you need to build credit, whatever the case is, don't go to a dealership to get approved for your auto loan. Don't Open up it. bank accounts and then shop your interest rates yourself with your credit unions that you have relationships with and take the bag, your bag to the auto dealership. Okay. They don't like people like that because they don't make enough money. Okay. They're not making any money off you. So that's why you want to get your own funding, your own financing, figure out what auto dealership will take it. Generally, I always recommend CarMax because CarMax is a no hassle hassle-free zone. They'll take pretty much most funding. I know for sure they take Navy Federal because I bought a car with their uh, Navy Federal check for them and get your auto that way. So that way you can get affordable auto loan payments. You can get whatever car you want with a low interest rate and you understand you're getting a good deal. What else do we have here? BCU. <laughs> that's another one that's pretty popular. I've been hearing a lot about that. Citadel. I've been hearing a lot about Citadel, a lot exactly. about Citadel. So Mission Federal, that's another one in San Diego, guys. Westcom mm -hmm. Credit Union, not much growth there, but they're a California credit union, um, Pasadena. So a lot of California credit unions, but if you're not in California, you can still get into uh, some of these credit unions. You just have to go to their website, check out what you need to do, whether that's using a family member or, again, getting like a virtual uh, personal address or business address is a workaround for that. Right. But man, such great credit unions. SECU, 
That's yeah. another one. Very good. Langley. I'm they don't have more growth because I know. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. SEC. Because there's a lot of credit unions on here. So SECU, Connexus, uh, Langley, that's one that I've talked about in the past. NASA, Federal Credit I thought, Union. I thought that was out of California. What, Langley? NASA, I thought. I oh, thought no. Was. Yeah, no. NASA is, it looks like Maryland. Yeah, so, I see that. Yeah, NASA is great. I love NASA. Highly recommend now, NASA. NASA is one of those where you can pre-approve, too. And I think NASA is an Equifax bank, if I'm not it's mistaken. Experience. It's Experian. Oh, it's Experian. Okay. I always look for Equifax banks because I always get clients that it's like, okay, we got a good Equifax. We got to go to an Equifax bank. And right. I've done videos where it's like the top Equifax banks. We'll have to do another video that talk about, you know, just banks that pull TransUnion, Experian, Right. Equifax, and because it, and for, for me, I like Experian banks because mm -hmm. out of the three, it's just easiest to get those anchors and move right away. Literally oh, yeah. Right away. Oh, yeah. It's so always, easy. always start and try to find all the Experian because Experian is the easiest to get uh, inquiries mm -hmm. removed over the phone. And if you yeah. are worried about them pulling your other bureaus, you can always lock like Equifax and TransUnion, so they can only pull from Experian, okay? That's another gem. But yeah, NASA, Langley, um, those, and look at the growth on NASA, 25.4% growth, okay? These are the banks that you guys need to be with. They got the money, whatever you need. Whatever you need is right here in front of you, okay? We literally just printed money for you guys to get. This is this is where it comes from. Exciting. This is exciting. Like, if I had this information when I was first starting, like, I could have saved so much money. Um, um, so much money. And there's another couple credit unions on here that I have. Safe Credit Union, that's another popular one out here. And so um, is Chevron Federal Credit Union. And Chevron Federal Credit Union has a lot of bonuses. Um, if you like share their membership, you can get 50 bucks and the person can get 50 bucks. That's actually how I got on with them. You don't right. necessarily have to work for Chevron, but a lot of these credit unions are just good to have and just get a small percentage direct deposited so you can get their sign on bonus and, you know, just start building that relationship with them. Travis Credit Union. That's another one um, that serves the military that's very popular with auto loans out here. But check out uh, General Electric Credit Union, 15% growth, which, man, that's that's crazy. Chevron, not so much, but um, yeah, 15% growth for General Electric Credit Union and then Royal Credit Union, 12% growth. So... Uh -huh. A lot of these credit unions are just, you know, flourishing right now because of videos like this, where we tell you guys, hey, these are the places that you need to go because they are going to give you the funding that you need. OK, um, State Farm, not so good. Their numbers aren't, aren't that great as far as growth goes. But then you've got George's own credit union. Funny enough, I was just looking at a credit report and this guy had ton of accounts from George's own. I mean, <laughs> man, he must have had 10 different accounts because he just kept on going back to them and getting personal loans and credit cards and, you know, auto loans. And they are a true example. And like, check this out, 88. Okay. I love the number eight. 88 again that's another a great number for me georgia's own is a phenomenal bank because they will give you multiple credit products genesis that's another one pretty good affinity trulient mm, right. california credit union dang so many credit unions from california so if you're from california you have mm. no excuse okay no, no excuse that's credit unions in the country yeah that's and like, oh, is. It's crazy, right? We're giving them all this information. And just think if you are a military or if you are a person of some sort of, you know, color or anything where you could qualify for a program that these banks will offer, a lot of people that are minorities, 
Banks have minority programs. They have veteran programs. So check out what type of programs these banks have, because I'm telling you, there are the, the opportunities are endless. And just because maybe one bank might not have something for you, head over to another bank that would specialize in minority funding or veteran funding because the money is out there. You just have to get it. I almost guarantee after, you. Look, look, after this video, they have no excuses. No excuses. No they excuses. They have no excuses. We, we on number 90. We're up to number 90 out of 100 credit unions. 100 so after credit this unions. Video, like she said, if one doesn't have what you want, that is 99 more of the top 100 mm -hmm. credit unions in the country. So yeah. and, and we are gave you the banks in our other video. Man. Of the top 100 banks. So you got 200 institutions to choose from. Mm -hmm. All you need is a good, I mean, I say unlimited amount, but you get you a good 10 of them. Yeah. I mean, how... Who knows how much money that can, you know, afford, award you, you know what I'm saying? Or I know you can definitely get at least 10 K like that's on the lower spectrum because right. you can go up to 50 K no doc with most of these banks. So if you can go between 30 and 50 K with, with these banks, you can buy property. You can buy, <laughs> I mean, whatever it is that you wanted, but you got to make sure that while your business is, you know, going, you have a way to pay it back because you don't want to get all this credit and not be able to afford the payments. So, you know, go at a slow pace. And another thing that I've noticed too, is like when somebody applies for too many banks at the same time, they could possibly get denied. So you want to pace yourself. You know, I always recommend the build, break, build method. You build it up, you get, you know, three, four, maybe five accounts at most. And then you take a break and you let those marinate for about six months. Okay. Let it garden. I like to say, yep. let it garden. Let it garden. Them yep. You just, you know, garden them, you water it, you spend, pay, spend, pay, spend, pay. Right. Then you take, you know, let that grow for six months, maybe even a year. Okay. Then you can build again, but you have to take a break. Okay. I know everyone wants to build, 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 but you're going to run yourself thin. You don't right. want to overdo it. Okay. You don't want to crash and burn. You want to be able to maintain your garden. Okay. And grow it properly. So these are some great options. And then, you know, our last 10 are right here for you guys. Apple federal credit union is another one that's super popular. A lot of people talk about it. We've talked about a couple Apple, uh, banks, but this is Apple federal credit union. And this is another bank that gives out high limits, Fairwinds, Tower. Uh, those are some that just off, off the top of my head, I know are good. But man, look at number 100. Look at the growth on that thing. Oh my gosh. Almost 50% asset growth. Wow. Twin star credit union. Wow. They are doing something right. And you know what? I've never heard of them. Yeah, I've I never heard of that bank. People. So these are wow. your top 100 credit unions. Now there are thousands and thousands of thousands right. of banks out there, but these are the top 100 banks and credit unions based on asset size. So that means that these banks aren't going to crash and burn anytime soon. Obviously you have seen the growth within just the last one year. Okay. And some of these numbers are like, Hey, pay attention. Okay. Pay attention, especially if you are into investing guys. Okay. That's a whole nother topic here, but a couple banks that, you know, off the top of my head, I did not see USAA bank on here. And that is a really great bank for those of you that are military veterans. Um, if you can get into USAA through family, I highly recommend it. So that was really the only bank that I did not see on our list here. But other than that, this sums it up. Okay. These are the banks and guess what banks where everyone knows about chances are they're already ran through They're right. They're tightening up their, tightening you know, up. approvals <laughs> because the internet done ruined it. But guess what? We gave you so many options that not all these options are burnt out. 
you got because you got enough options for the next five years. Okay, that's true because a lot of these banks and credit unions we haven't even heard of. Right. You know, right. we do this stuff almost every day. So right. if we haven't heard of it, then the internet and you know everybody else definitely hasn't right. heard of it. So get in early, and um, you start know, start building up that relationship. Now. Start building, babies. Just build. Just do it. Before we get started, I'm going to let my special guest introduce himself to you guys. He is the man. I'm telling you, I have been following him for years. So if you haven't followed him already, make sure to head over to his YouTube channel and Instagram and follow him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say, you know, thank you for having me on. Um, it's definitely a privilege, an honor to be on with you. I've been following you for a long time as well. Um, but my name is Marquise Price. Um, I'm out of Orlando, Florida originally. Um, I'm down in Tampa, Florida now. Been in the credit space for like the last five or six years. Um, I ain't going to talk your head off because we got a lot, <laughs> lot to cover. But um, yes, Marquise, I go by King underscore finance man on all the social platforms. Make YouTube. sure to follow the right one because there has right. been so many people that have yeah. impersonated this man trying yeah. to get your money, but there is only one official and it is verified account right, on Instagram. Verified, yeah, King underscore finance man, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, um, all the platforms. So yeah, one official account. Hopefully all the 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 hacked accounts and scammer accounts are gone, but um but yeah, let's let's get to it, man. I'm excited. Yes, I'm excited too. Thank you so much for, for joining me today, guys. And like I said, guys, we're going to be talking <clears throat> about the top banks for you to get it back. Some of these banks are geo-restricted. I've covered what that means in some of my previous videos. So if you don't know what that means is basically if you're not in that area, you're not going right. to qualify to get a bank account with that particular bank unless you kind of do some workarounds, which, you know, you can get a virtual office location. You can get a virtual personal address. You can use family members, addresses, friends, addresses, things of that sort. So let's go ahead and get started. So I want to talk about obviously top places, top banks to get a bag from. And the way that we came up with this information is based on facts. So I want you guys to get ready, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to follow both me and King Finance Man so you can get more information because I want to give you a huge shout out to those of you that are listening and watching and trying to change your life with credit because this whole credit thing, it takes time. There's no special recipe. It just takes time and dedication and hard work. So let as me long- back. Yes, Let me absolutely. take it back off of that because that is so important. Cause I'm sure just like you, um, or just like me, I see these people on social media. Well, we can do this in two weeks. We can get rid of this collection and get you funded in 17 days. And I'm just like, the likelihood of that happening is so <clears throat> slim. All right. It's possible. Yes. But is it likely? Absolutely not. Um, and when, when you speak in generalities, it takes time especially now with so many people doing it yes. what worked a couple of years ago just doesn't work as effective um in this day and age no. yes we can still get your results and, and a lot of the times though we just can't get them as fast as we would like because i tell clients all the time as fast as you want results i want them faster because that's one less headache that we have to deal with y'all have to understand us as credit uh specialists we want results extremely fast a hundred times faster than y'all do so trust us when we tell y'all if we tell y'all it takes time that means it just takes time it is a process yes absolutely i couldn't agree with you more and i always tell people if it sounds too good to be true i hate to be the bearer of bad news but guess what it is <laughs> you know i i hate to be the one that's like oh you don't know nothing. It's like, well, go ahead and fuck around and find out. You know what I mean? I, I hate exactly. to say it that way, but exactly. fuck around and find out. Because when you see that nice shiny rainbow with the 
pot of gold at the bottom of it looking all shiny and bright, guess what? It's fool's gold. It's not real. So when you go to grab it, it ain't really there. So, um, you know, if you knew better, you can do better. You know what my motto is, guys. If it sounds too good to be true, please put the sensors on in your brain. <laughs> If it was right. really that easy, everyone would have good credit, right? I swear, <laughs> it wouldn't be millions and millions of people with bad credit if yes. it was just that simple. So it takes time, but you just have to be patient. Um, and that's, you know, something that I talk about often is dedication and patience. You know, I've been through myself. Marquise has been through this himself. We've helped thousands of people right. together. <clears throat> And it's, there's no special sauce. There's no special recipe. You know, some people might have results faster than others, but in this day and age, there's a tremendous amount of technology that's just right. getting smarter and smarter. Smart. And, yeah. you know, especially if things have happened in the last two years that the banks and financial institutions, you know, they don't usually cash their records until it's been four years Right. Or more so um, you just really have to be responsible with credit and you know do what you can if something comes back validated after you know so many tries I always tell people let's give it six months or so yeah. and then if you know you're in a rush you don't have any more time hey we might just have to settle it because have to settle that day, yeah. it is what it is we got to move forward okay so enough about the negative. We're going to get right. into all the fun stuff here, guys, because... Get into the fun oh, stuff once man. you do get your credit right. Absolutely, because this information is going to save you thousands and thousands of dollars. Not to mention that most of these banks have really great, not only auto loans mm -hmm. with reasonable interest rates, home loans, business loans, any type of financial product that you would need. These are the banks that you want to get with. I'm telling you guys why, because they have the most amount of assets. All right. So get ready, make sure that you've subscribed, give us a huge thumbs up. And I want to thank you guys for watching today. I know we've talked your ear off enough already. You're ready to get to it. So let's, let's get into it. So um, next is we want to talk about the top 100 banks. And these are just banks. They are not credit unions. We also have a list of the top 100 credit unions. Okay. So this right here, let me tell you, I'm excited. I'm excited about right. this. Like I... <laughs> I was going, I was making this slideshow last night and I was like, oh my God, like we're dropping some major game and like how my subscribers say it's a game changer. You know, it's yeah. a game changer because imagine, I'm sorry, but imagine this, this is just 100 banks, no credit unions. Mm -mm. There's clearly way more than 100 banks, mm -hmm. but just imagine getting $10,000 from 100 banks, just 10. From 100 banks. Man, no excuse. There's no excuse because you're well, not going to get approved from every bank. Okay. You, right. Let's just be honest. Unless you have like perfect credit. Um, but if you get told no, there you have 100 banks to choose from. <laughs> We're giving you 200 total. 100 banks, 100 credit unions. Okay. And these are the top 100 based on their assets. So right. this is not just us saying, well, I think this is a good bank. No, these right. are banks based on the asset size. So we're talking about banks that truly have the funds to allocate to, you know, credit cards, to business loans, to mortgages, auto loans. They got it. Okay. You just got to get the bag. You just got to get your credit right and get credit the bag. <laughs> All right, so we've got our first group of the 100, and we're not going to go over all of these banks because obviously you see them here on our screen, but I'm just going to point out some of my favorite. I'm going to let Marquise pick out some of his favorite, and we'll just kind of give you some insight on you know what we think about some of these banks. But keep in mind, most of these banks, no, not most of these banks, but these banks are listed in order based on the asset size. So 
Chase is number one. Wells Fargo is number two. You get the drift here. Bank of America, number three. Those are like the top three banks. Why? It's based on their assets because they have a ton of money to give you, but you just have to make sure that your credit is right before you approach them. And you have to understand some of these banks are more selective and they don't want to deal with people that are risky. So if you have below a 720 FICO credit score, they're probably going to deny you. If you have more than say four inquiries, they might deny you like Chase is very inquiry sensitive and they have that 524 rule. So if you've opened up more than five accounts in the last 24 months, they're probably going to say no because you're too risky. So, you know, I'll let you start because I'm, I'm like a little kid in a candy <laughs> store. I'm like, I like all these banks. <laughs> I, know. Hey, I, I like all of them too, but <clears throat> excuse me, if I had to pick three of my favorites on here, um, I kind of alluded to some of them earlier. Yeah. So Truist for sure, just because they aren't as strict, you know, as of right now, yeah. things change, things are fluid. So yeah. get your credit right and get it right fast. But um, Truist, um, Key Bank, even though yeah. Key Bank is outside of my footprint, um, but we've got some people funded through Key Bank. So Key Bank is cool. Um, and then I have to go with... <clears throat> I have to go with PNC Bank. As yeah, my third. I like PNC too. They have PNC. really good interest rates. And right now, they are one of the banks where I've seen the lowest interest rates on vehicles. Because as we know, like it, the economy sucks right now. Interest rates are kind of high. And there's not really a cap on interest rates. Um, you know, interest rates, the lowest interest rates that I've seen have been at PNC Bank for vehicles. And last I checked, it was 6%. So that's still kind of high, but anything under 10 would be the goal, right? And that's what a lot of people have to realize. You have to understand the terms, right? When we're at the auto dealership and we're trying to buy a car and we hear that word approved, that's all we care about, okay? Where do I sign? I'm approved, let's go, let's go. But erase that mindset. It's very, you know, stressful being at the dealership trying to get a vehicle, especially if you don't have the best credit because you're willing to take whatever they'll give you, even if it was a PT Cruiser. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you have to understand what is the interest rate, okay? Because you don't want to have a six or $700 car payment that you can't afford, okay? And don't have the mindset, well, I'll just take it and deal with it later because you're gonna have to start working on your credit now and invest more money to fix your credit so you can refinance your vehicle in the next six to 12 months so you can get affordable auto payments, okay? Um, some of the best banks to refinance your vehicle are gonna be credit unions, but PNC is not a credit union. They are very good. Um, I also like Truist, even though that's outside of my footprint. I'm in California, so some of the banks that are pretty popular out here, obviously your top three are pretty popular anywhere, but um, let's see, US Bank, that's a pretty good one. Regions Bank, I don't see a lot of regions out here in California, but I do I like that bank. We have them here. Okay. Florida. Yeah, you yeah. guys got a lot of, you got Huntington out there too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Huntington. Huntington's a good one. M&T Bank, that's another one. Um, uh, Wood Forest National Bank, a lot of people don't talk about this bank, but. Yeah, I'll be looking at that one. That's, yeah. That's, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I'm glad you got that on this list because I didn't even know about this one. Yeah, this is a pretty big bank and I mean, a lot of people just don't talk about this bank. So these are obviously, you know, your top banks right here. And again, these are not the credit unions. These are just, you know, your, your normal banks, but these are going to be, you know, 
the top selected banks if you're looking to start off. And if you have issues opening up bank accounts, you need to get that fixed immediately, even if that means paying the alleged amount that's listed on your report with check systems or early warning. Go to their website, request your report, and look at it. If you need help, you can book a call with either of us to figure it out, but that is going to prevent you from opening up bank accounts, you know, on the personal side, we can't have that. We need you to get in on the personal side and then build that relationship up over towards the business side. Okay. Um, right. so gonna, let's give them some quick gems real quick oh, too. While we yeah. on this list. So from some of our favorite banks that we um, just gave y'all. So PNC bank, they're going to pull from, let's tell them what they're going to pull from. PNC bank going to typically pull from experience. Yep. Um, Key Bank, we spoke about earlier, Equifax. Bank of America is primarily an Experian bank as well. Sometimes I've pull, I've seen them pull a second bureau from TransUnion or Equifax, but primarily they're Experian. Right, Same so with Chase, inner, too. Yeah, Chase, Chase, Chase could be Experian and Equifax, but... Primarily, so I see. It be pretty random, but yeah. I'm still doing that. But to, to piggyback off of Bank of America, for me, for example, here in Florida, when I got my business auto loan through them, they pulled my Experian. Mm -hmm. But then when I got my business credit card from them, they pulled TransUnion. Ooh, that's a gem right there. That's a so, gem. Just to give y'all a little heads up of what may happen, at least. Yeah. There in the southern region, um, they pulled my experience for the auto, the business auto loan, and they pulled my TransUnion for the business credit cards. That's good to know because that's <clears throat> that's another thing that a lot of people don't talk about is banks will use different credit bureaus for different credit products, and I've seen that a lot with different banks. Like for example, um, you know, Navy Federal. They're, you know, primarily a transunion bank on the personal side, but I've also seen them pull from Equifax for different credit products with different people, not in California, but I work with a lot of people that are in other states as well. So I've seen them primarily with transunion and then some credit products with um, transunion and Equifax. It's mainly like when you get a vehicle, you could see that other pull. And then on the business side, they're pulling from Experian on the business side um, for your you know personal credit. With, you know what happened with Navy? See, Navy primarily before was an Equifax bank. Oh, I didn't know that. And I don't know when they kind of switched over to TransUnion. And uh, see, this is what I used to do when I was, you know, um, I just happened to be on the phone with Navy one day and um, just asked a lot of questions. That's the way to go, man. That is the way to do it. Get that banker were, that wants to talk. Right. Exactly. They were primarily, primarily an Equifax bank, and then they switched over to TransUnion. And like you just said, on the business side, it definitely is experience. So what I was told was, and I, I don't know if it's still like this. This was maybe like a year or two ago. When you get a new, when you apply for a new credit product, they were, you know, they had switched over to TransUnion. Mm. But say like I wanted a um, a credit limit increase or something that I already had, but wanted to upgrade or whatever the case is, they were still pulling the Equifax. Oh, wow. So... It, initial credit products will be TransUnion. And then right. if you want any credit line increases, that's where we're going to see Equifax at. Right. At the time, maybe it's all TransUnion now mm -hmm. because they converted over. <clears throat> but at the time, that's that's what I was told. Interesting. Were... Right, right. You know, I was just on the phone with uh, one of my clients and he was telling me an interesting story uh about transunion and i always like to share these little tidbits with you because you know things are always changing and that's why a lot of this information isn't in black and white because there's so much gray area and there's they're always you know changing things right they're always trying to stay one step ahead of us right but he was telling me that uh he was speaking with someone at navy federal and 
he was telling him, don't apply for any credit products now because your credit score is so low. You need to wait until your credit score goes up a little bit and then apply because if we pull your credit now, we can still see that. So it would look like, you know, you got credit repair or that it wasn't right. So I, that always kind of stuck with me because I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. So if you are planning to apply for anything with Navy Federal, don't apply until you are ready. Don't just apply if you're getting credit repair and then your credit score is going to go up in like three months. You want to make sure that you do everything very strategically. Some things that you can get with Navy Federal that don't require a credit pull is the pledge loan. And I've talked about this a number of times, but it just helps you build credit, it will report to all three of the credit bureaus as like an installment loan. It is secured, so it is your own money, but it doesn't require them to pull your credit. So that's a great way that you can help build credit, build your relationship while you're waiting on your credit score to go up. Yeah, and that's a great point because I I didn't even know that. Um, I always heard about their quote unquote internal score. But, yeah, um, they got their internal score down and <laughs> You know, the more accounts that you have with them, checking account, savings account, if you have some sort of CD account, I recommend doing a CD account, it's like a savings account for a certain term. Um, mm -hmm. If you get like a pledge loan, those are all things that are going to help increase your internal score, which goes up to a 450. And that way, you know, it just helps build that relationship. So I have a really good internal score. The only way that you really know what your internal score is, is when you apply for a credit product and then they'll actually send you a letter. Keep that letter because the letter will tell you what your credit score was at the time of approval or denial based on whatever the outcome was. But on the back of that, it's going to tell you um, what your internal score with Navy Federal is and it doesn't there's not really like a black and white guide on how to get your internal score with Navy Federal as high as possible but obviously the you know the concept behind it is the more positive accounts that you have with me Navy Federal um, the more like investment accounts that you have with Navy Federal the more uh, your score is going to be with them all right great so let's go ahead and move on to the second group in our list and so there'll be 16 mm. banks on our next slide here which oh my god this is like mm. i would say the number one that i that screams to me right now is bmo harris because right. they have really stepped their game up um and obviously they're ranking very high based on assets right now they have a ton of money that they're willing to lend out on the personal side and on the business side. Now, I've been seeing a lot of commercials for BMO Harris right now, and one thing that they're really pushing in their advertising right now is, we are the bank to give you funding to grow your business. So if you are a small business, look into BMO. It'll be all about the startups. Yep. Um, and they, have, they also have some minority programs too mm. that um, you don't have the best, you know, credit score or profile can't be horrible. Can't be just right. Pity. Can't be disrespectful. <laughs> right. Can't be disrespectful. But if you know you're, you're middle of the road, you know, 640, 650 ish, um, maybe, maybe one, you know, derogatory mark, you know, they still wouldn't have worked with you with yeah. this particular, um, minority program that they're kind of rolling out right now so definitely keep bmo harris in mind mm -hmm. and um, i know here in florida or here in where i'm at in uh you know tampa area we have two locations on um, two branches here in the area so um nice i'm familiar with bmo and um great bank definitely a great bank for startups for sure yeah i absolutely agree with you on that um capital one obviously we've we've all heard of capital one for their credit cards um the downside about capital one is when you apply for their credit products they are going to be pulling your credit from all three credit bureaus so that's why like i'm not a fan of capital one but sometimes we have to start 
somewhere. And Capital One is usually going to be your first credit card that you get approved for when you're either rebuilding your credit or first starting out to build credit. They'll give you, you know, like a $300 credit card and then in six months graduate you to 500 and so on and so forth. But again, it's going to cost you a hard inquiry from each credit bureau, which we want to kind of avoid. If we can go with a bank that's going to approve us with only one credit pull, hard pull, and we can actually go through like a pre-qualification and do a soft pull to get pre-qualified just to make sure that everything's a go. Now, pre-qualified doesn't mean you're absolutely approved, right? But You can go to their website and see if you pre-qualified to see if it says you're good or not right now, right? Right. But other than that, I would say the only bank on this list um, would be BMO Harris for me. I'm not a huge fan of Santander because they are very high interest rates. If you do have an auto loan with Santander, I'm sure you are well aware. So we definitely want to try to get those high interest auto loans refinanced. Anything, like I said, anything under 10% uh, interest rate is the goal, right? Um, Because that's going to save you a tremendous amount on your auto loans. Um, Any other banks that you can recommend to folks here? On on <clears throat> on this particular slide, maybe First National Bank. I've heard some things about First National Bank. I have too, actually. I've heard a lot of good things about right. First National Bank and um, City National. So there's First National and then there's City National Bank. Both of those banks I've heard great things about. So you can definitely check that out because if you are a small business owner, or if you're someone that's looking to, you know, get credit on the personal side, you definitely want to start building relationships with different banks and diversify your banking, not just have direct deposit at one. But if you have direct deposit with your job or your business, have that direct deposit it's split up, you know, between a few uh-huh. different banks. So that way, if you are getting a new sign on bonus, you know, obviously direct deposit is going to be part of that. You can have that as a direct deposit. You don't need to have 100% of your check going in there as long as you have some sort of direct deposit. So, um, yeah, just be you know mindful that you don't need to have just one bank, right? And a lot of these banks will have great welcome offers where you can get money, 200 bucks for just signing up for a bank account. So that's, you know, pretty awesome in itself. So let's move on to the next slide here. Um, this one has a, few, a lot of banks that I personally have never used, but I've heard really good things about, for example, Frost Bank. I personally don't have an account with them, but I have a lot of clients in Texas and they have mm-hmm. said nothing but positive things about Frost Bank. And same with uh, West Banco. I've heard a lot of things about that bank as well. Fulton Bank too. I've heard a lot of, an Umqua. That's mm-hmm. one that I, I said, guys, hey, mm-hmm. if you have an Umqua, definitely check out Umqua because they are a very underrated bank. And as you can see, they have a huge amount of assets because obviously they're on this list. That means they got the money to give. Money. And that's another thing. A lot of y'all, just because you've never heard of a bank, that does not mean they don't have plenty of assets. And Mm -hmm. as these slides have shown, especially the last two, these are going in order of how many assets they have. Yeah. So that that's that's they have more money than a lot of the banks that we haven't seen yet that mm-hmm. I know that y'all know. Yeah. So um, that's why again it's very important to um especially if you're on this credit journey and you know ultimately you want some sort of funding, get you a mentor or get in a, a Facebook group or just follow somebody who is giving out this information so you can, you know, be on point and stay on point with all this different all these different things and don't believe the hype i tell you guys this if it sounds too good to be true guess what i'm gonna burst your bubble right now pop it is i said it i said it it's true though it is it is it's so true you know and you know it just 
That's why it, I get so angry when I go on social media and see this type of BS because I'm like, how is this 23 year old who's driving a Ferrari talking to me about credit? I mean, it blows my mind, but that's what you guys like to see. The lifestyle marketing, the jewelry, right. the the fancy cars. Y'all don't want to hear this realness. You don't want to hear this realness. Okay. But for those of you that do, thank you, you so me. much. You're going to get it. That's what you're going to get because we are here to give you the real deal info. So that way you can make better informed decisions because don't just, you know, pull the trigger right away. Like I have so many clients that are like, Ooh, my credit scores is 700. Next thing I know, they've right. got 10 inquiries on their credit right. report, pulling the trigger too soon. Hey, it's like, I literally got a text <laughs> either late last night or this morning. Somebody sent me their scores, right? Uh huh. One, um, one of them was just under 700. The other two, um, were like 720, 730. So I said, okay, um, that's not bad. But I said, are they your FICO scores or are they your Vantage scores, right? Oh, yeah. He said, well, I don't know. I said, well, what site are you looking at right now? He said, Identity IQ. I said, Ooh. okay, that's your Vantage score. Yeah. Identity IQ is cool for us as um, right. a credit repair specialist because it, it gives us a lot of information that we need. But in terms of the score, no. showing your Vantage score. So I said, hey, man, here go a link to... So my my score IQ yes tells you your your FICO score yes it was like um he he signed up for it. he was like man I'm confused now yeah my scores aren't showing over seven hundred so I said see yep. that's why you got to be you know keen on what's really going on because yeah. that would have been somebody who saw his scores over seven hundred yeah and then went out there and started applying for different things and getting denied all over the place. If you knew better, you would do better. You have to understand if you get your credit score for free, nine times out of 10, it's going to be a Vantage score. The only folks that I have ever seen that have approved somebody based on a Vantage score are property management companies, okay? Right. Because it's a cheaper way to obtain someone's credit report and credit scores, okay? Now, some of these apps that you see, you know, you just have to look at how your score is being calculated, okay? There's three things that I tell people to look for. What uh, method is it being calculated with? Either Vantage 3.0, Vantage 4.0, or if it's a FICO, usually it's gonna be like a FICO 8 or FICO 9 uh, scoring right. model, right? But different credit products might use a different FICO, you know, score. So that's another thing. Um, Navy Federal, they usually use a FICO 9 credit scoring model. Um, same thing with like Mercedes Benz. When they pulled my credit, they used a FICO 9 credit scoring model to calculate my credit score. But you have to look at, you know, how it's being calculated, um, what the date is as of. Is it as of today or is it as of a month ago? Because obviously you want the most latest and greatest info. And then also, where is this from TransUnion, Experian or Equifax? Because generally if you're using like a free app, like with, you know, your bank, um, it's only going to be from one credit bureau. So those are some of the things that you just have to kind of keep in mind when you're looking at it. It's good to, you know, just kind of see what everyone is saying. So you yeah. can make sure all the data is somewhat, you know, up to date. Cause like I tell people all the time, cause people love to give credit karma a bad rap. But I'm like, y'all, it's just because y'all don't really understand. Right. Like, I love Credit Karma. It's a great I it way. I hate the way they switched it up now, but the, the way they had it just before they made it, mm -hmm. the looks, I was like, it literally gives you everything right there in a snapshot. Yeah. Like, information wise, you know, it's going to be pretty on point for the most part. I say the scores I don't even pay attention to because I know nobody's pulling those scores anyway. Right. Information wise, it's free and it's you know it's there. Yeah. You know what I'm but, um, yeah, but you know, to the overall point, you have to know and have a good understanding of of what they're looking at and where they're getting it from. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. FICO scores, ten out of ten times is what they're gonna pull when you're applying for any type of credit product. 
Yep, exactly. So, you know, like if you're educated, you can make better decisions to get you approved because a lot of people just go into this blind and just start firing off applications and just, I'm just going to, it's like shooting a gun in the dark. Like you have to do this strategically. You have to have a plan. You need to be able to understand the process because it's usually going to end up in a denial if you don't know what you're doing or if your credit profile isn't updated. You don't want to apply for credit cards if you have a bunch of credit cards that have a balance on them, regardless if the balance is $1 or 50 cents. Okay. If you are applying for credit cards, do yourself a favor, pay off all of your credit cards to a zero balance and allow them to report because the banks do not want to give money to people who look like they need money. They want to no. give a lot of money to those of you that look like, I don't need the money. No big deal. If you don't give it to me, someone else will. Okay. So make sure that you pay your credit cards off and then allow it time to update on your reports. Do not apply for credit cards. If your credit cards are maxed out, if you have a balance on all of your credit cards. Just don't. Please, no. So it's, it's much more that goes into funding or it, it's mainly funding because mm -hmm. um, um, when we're talking credit card funding, especially like she said, please just, it's so much more that goes into it than just your score. Because yeah. again, you could have a, a nice 720 or so, but your profile may not be you know, conducive to the banks lending you money. Right. Every bank is different. You know, some banks are more easygoing than others, but overall, you just have to understand the concept. Get yourself ready before you apply. If you want to apply for a credit and you want to apply for a couple different yeah. cards at the same time, get your plan together. Okay. That's um, where credit card stacking comes into play. At, but yeah, we'll exactly. Consider. That's a whole, I just did a video on that one. That's a, oh, we could go on all day, really. But we're going to try to stick to the script here, guys. So our next block of banks here to get the bag. Oh my God. This one, let me see. Ameris Bank. That's going to be my top pick right there. There you go. Yeah, mine too. I would Oof. have the same one. Yes, yes. Uh, First Merchants Bank. Um, I've heard good things about that one. So, you know, it's funny cause like me doing credit and looking at these, some of these banks I've never heard of myself, but yeah, I'm looking for some days, but I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. But you know, they're not in every state. And if you really right. wanted to go bank with these banks, there's workarounds. Okay. If you don't have family, um, you can get a address in these banks, or if you're a business, you can elect to have a foreign entity and get a virtual business office in these locations to get a bank account. Okay. And that's the great thing about it. Um, I actually just partnered with a company that offers virtual business locations pretty much everywhere and i will leave the link below for you guys mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. i've used you know opus and i've used a lot of these other you know i've used regis i've used yeah. a ton of different virtual office locations and you have to check the address you have to check if the address is listed as a mail receiving company okay and this company that I just partnered with, I've checked a ton of their addresses and I have not found any that have been marked as a mail receiving company. Okay. So I'm going to leave the link below for you guys. If you need a virtual business address, more gems being dropped Feel all free. the time. Just let it rain. We're making a sprinkle with these gems. Um, all right. So I think that's pretty much it. I mean, some of these other banks, could be really great, but I really just don't have a lot of knowledge in regards to say like Flagstar. But if you guys in the comments, if you guys have had, you know, any relations with these banks, 
drop it below. Let me know if your experience with some of these banks, because obviously, like, I've never met one person that has had 100 banks. But if we all come together as community, we can all learn from each other and say, hey, what bank is going to be best for me? Because if this person had a great experience with them and they can refer me to their, their um, you know, banking relationship manager, we're all good. Because one thing that I've noticed is, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, influencers, they talk about how they have a bank relationship manager at the bank and, you know, they got the plug. Guess what? That person works at the bank and that's their job. Okay. You can literally do the same thing. You just have to, you know, go walk into the bank or call that person or email that person and you can get the same relationship because, they're they have parameters okay and they're not going to overstep the parameters that they're oh, given from the their table. bank oh, I'm a, if he's sending them just push it through yeah you still meet all the credit requirements yeah so it's really a plug right it's a not plug. it's not a plug okay all right, a plug is somebody who i can go with a 300 credit score and still get fifty thousand dollar credit card mm -hmm. that's a plug but if i still gotta have a 720 no derogatories a full profile yeah Guess what? That's their that. job to bring exactly. in people and to take applications. They're right. not providing any sort of workaround, any favors. They, if anything, they're saying, Hey, this is not a good time for this person. Like that's the type of relationship that we need. Hey, maybe you should do this, that, and the other before we submit your application, because I don't think it's going to be a good time right now. Right. That's another thing is you have to understand is it your time to get funding right now or need, do you need to wait, you know, for some things to update? Um, personal info, very important. That's another one. So just make sure that um, you are set up properly. OK, I just had someone apply for the Apple card and they couldn't verify him because his address was not updated. So he was denied. And guess what? Goldman Sachs, they do underwriting for the Apple card and for the GM financial card. And that GM financial card is on the personal side and the business side. So that's a really great card, but you need to make sure that your personal information matches. Whatever is on your credit report should be on your application. Don't put like totally different locations because you're going to get denied. Make sure your personal info is updated and use the same exact name and same exact address. I'm talking about if you have a middle initial and you put J period, that needs to be the exact same on every report. If you're not using an initial, just leave it blank but it needs to be consistent, exactly the same, okay? All right, so let's move on to the next block of banks here, guys. Um, man, there is some good ones here. Oof, my God, okay. First National Bank, that one, First National Bank is a great bank. Mechanics, great bank. that's another one that's really popular, and I don't hear nobody talking about mechanics, First National, um, people's bank. I personally don't have it, but I have heard a lot of great things about that one. So this is another really great block of banks guys. And again, these are just normal banks. They're not even, we're not even touching on the credit unions yet. We're going to get to that. We're going to be dropping a hundred credit unions for you guys as well. But, you know, some of these banks aren't going to be in your area and that's fine. We gave you the workaround, but I'm telling you, if, if some of these banks are in your area, start grooming that relationship now. Start opening up a bank account with them, maybe a bank account, savings account, set up a direct deposit. Even if you're only direct depositing 10%, a lot of these banks, like I said before, they will have a welcome offer on their website. Sometimes they'll even get uh, some, send you something in the mail, like, hey, if you open up a bank account, we'll give you $200 or whatever. Take advantage of those things because most of the time, the only thing that you would need to qualify for is direct deposit. And hey, if even if I'm direct depositing 5% into this bank account, that's still a direct deposit, okay? So get your money. Get your money, please. I love direct deposit. Love it. 
Love it, love it, love it. And that is the thing. A lot of people don't understand that you can break up your direct deposit between, you know, a hundred different banks if you wanted to. But, I'm you know. I'm sure a lot of people do not know that. No. So fucking crazy gems. Right. right and, you know, a, a lot of you guys, you have 100% of your paycheck being deposited into your checking account what you really need to do is have a certain percentage go into a savings account or multiple savings accounts every month and not even touch that money that needs to be your emergency funds and that way you can pick a bank that has the best you know return on there like you know navy federal or a credit union um but get that savings together guys because a lot of people don't have any savings. So if an emergency happens, they have to put it on their credit card and then their credit score drops and it's a whole big, you know, debacle, but we don't want that. Um, another bank that I want to point out to you guys is city national bank. A lot of people do not talk about city national bank. This bank is highly favored. Um, I really, really like city national bank. I have a really great friend that works for City National Bank, and they specialize in small business loans. They work with the SBA, and they have funded millions and millions of small business owners. Now, if you guys know anything about business loans and the SBA, you'll know they pretty much want like a blood sample, a DNA, and like everything mm -hmm. except for your left pinky. Um, but you know, ultimately. If you are a business and you are set up properly, you can get SBA funding. They just want documents, okay? Um, and that's where, you know, there's funding kind of has its levels, right? If you're talking about no doc funding levels, okay, that goes up to about 50K, right? About 50K is gonna be no doc uh, funding. But if you wanna play in the big boy league and you want SBA money, which is the Small Business Administration, a lot of these banks offer SBA loans, right? But it's gonna require documents, bank statements, tax returns, and it doesn't have to be you know, anything fancy. It doesn't need to show that you're making millions of dollars, be honest, okay? Because if you have a business plan together and you show the SBA how you plan to allocate these funds to grow your business, that's what they're giving you the money for. And that's most important. So get it together, get your personal credit together. That all trickles over to the business side because if you ain't got your personal credit, you're not going to get business funding. All of those no PG business stuff that people talk about is BS, okay? If they're net 30s, um, you might be able to get a high interest auto loan, you know, what have they got? The Sam's Club MasterCard that you can get, a high interest 20% credit card, not much, okay? So get your personal credit together. That's right, that's the center of it all. That's Absolutely. the core, everything. Um, like she said, I get so many people that DM me or whatever, um, oh, I want to get business, you know, credit, business funding. Mm -hmm. I asked him, how's a personal credit? This one girl responded back, oh, it's not good, but, you know, we're not worried about my personal credit because everything going to be on the business side. <laughs> you are your business. <laughs> well, good luck. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That that whole um, no PG BS that was really popular a couple years ago, um, even like Divi capital on tap, it, it's not right. real. Divi is a net 30. Um, they're going to take the money straight out of your bank account, whether you like it or not. Uh, capital on tap, they look at Experian on the personal side and it is a net 30 as well. Uh, Brex, all those cars that people talk about, they're all net 30 accounts. They're charge cards. Okay. They're not revolving credit cards that you can pay over time. So, right it makes it next to impossible for you to get real funding that you can actually use with a lower credit score. So ultimately your personal credit is the foundation. Okay. I talk about foundation a lot and that's, that's really what it is. There's no way around it. Like I nope. said, if you're curious about what you're doing and you want to play, you know, in the big leagues, you know, like you said, a couple of those other places you can go to, but, 
It's yeah. only it's only you can only go so far with Yeah, you're gonna eventually run mm -hmm. into blocks like, oh, you can't go past this step. Like, oh, you wanna go to tier two on the business? Okay, some of these are gonna start requiring a personal guarantee, you know. There's only there's only so many store cards and gas cards and things that you can get nowadays that don't require PG. Um, a lot of places are becoming a lot stricter because everyone mm -hmm. in their mother and brother and everyone that was home during the pandemic, they started getting business credit. They 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 literally ran all that no PG stuff into the ground to where nobody wants to do it anymore. The floor and decor that was just burnt to the crisp. Okay, anytime there's like a no PG hack, it just it turns bad. Okay, all the gas cards that used to be no PG like Wex and Fuel Man, all of those are starting to become a personal guarantee, or you have to be cash flowing. You have to understand there's going to be one of three things, if not maybe two of these things are going to be required in order for you to get approved cash, collateral, or credit. Okay. If you ain't got cash flow, you're going to need credit. If you don't have cash flow, you might need collateral. If you don't have credit, you're going to need cash and collateral. Okay. So there you have it. So let's move on to the next one here California mm. Bank and Trust. Yep, that one I see that one I see out here a lot. Apple Bank. That one I, I see. I heard about Apple Bank. Uh I heard about that one. Mhm. Mm that one's pretty popular. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of people talking about Apple and I I have I personally don't use them, but I've heard good things about them, so um definitely something to check out if you're in New York. Right. A lot uh, of these banks I've, I've never heard of. So again, yeah, guys, if you've that. had experience with some of these banks, drop it below. Let us know what your experience is, who they pull credit from, you know, what kind of credit products do you have with them? Um, what are some of the limits on the credit cards? Because obviously we want to find the best banks with the highest credit approvals besides you know the ones that we already know of that are going to be on our top 100 credit union list because um you know the credit unions in my opinion that's where the real bags at because they give you high limits okay but again if you've had experience with some of these other banks with the higher limits let us know west america bank that's another california bank i see i'm seeing a lot of texas banks out here so um, if you guys have experience with that, let us know. Here's an Oklahoma bank first. So a lot of good banks here, a lot of national banks, a lot of community banks. Let's get on to the next one here. So guys, if you have not by now, make sure that you have liked the video. Give me a huge thumbs up. Make sure that you've subscribed to the channel and share this information. I know the video is long, but take the time to listen to it because this is the information that you need to know. I'm not mm, giving yes. you the information that sounds like, oh, that's a scam. I wish someone would call me a scam. Someone did that in, on my Instagram the other day talking about you're a scam. I'm like, well, thank you for your feedback. I looked at her Instagram page. I'm like, if anyone's the scam here, it looks like you like, I, I don't yeah. even, <laughs> you have all this credit repair stuff on your, on your profile, but I don't even know who does it. Like get out of here with that. But make sure that you guys have shared the video because your engagement helps me reach yes. a wider audience and i greatly appreciate it and they need to hear this info everyone needs to hear this information because this is not taught in school i spent so much money learning this information and i put it all together and give it to you guys for free the only thing that you guys need to do is just take the time to listen and learn, okay? I put the content out there for you guys. I'm getting a lot of people that are just now, you know, coming to the channel, coming to my channel and learning and saying, hey, I didn't know you were out there. I don't run ads, okay? I do everything organic. So it's up to you guys to spread the word, share this on your social media, share this via text. Like, hey, you gotta hear this information because these, these, these people that do credit, they keeping it real, 
Okay, they're not trying to make a buck from you. I could care less about getting a paid client if I have to lie to them. That's not me at all. That's not that's not him at all either. That's not what we're here for. We're here to give you the real deal information and to really help you get to the next level. Of course it takes time, but guess what? You got to be dedicated to this shit, okay? Because to piggyback off of her real quick, <clears throat> do you know how many times, and I'm sure you can attest to this, <clears throat> um, people, when we get on these calls, they just really want us to tell them what all these people are promising them. Mm -hmm. You say you want me to lie to you. Like, exactly. hey, girl, you know, you know I could get your credit together in like 30 days. It's going to be 2500 If we just said what everybody wanted to mm -hmm. hear. But I don't want the long term. I, I think I would be rich by now. I'm pretty sure if I sure. told everyone that I had a call with, like, hey, no problem. I got you. I can do it. I guarantee it. Oh, 30 days? No problem. If I told everyone that I had a call with that, I would be your I would we'll be rich. Close every, we'll close every single call. Yeah, I would be rich. But guess what? In the real world that we live right. in, it's it's just not true. And I don't think I could sleep at night knowing yeah. that I've taken these people's money and I can't guarantee anything. I can't guarantee anything. The only thing that I guarantee is that I will teach you what you need to know in order to be successful. But it's up to you to take action. It's up to you to do the right thing. It's up to you to pay your bills on time, keep your credit card balances low and get your finances together. King Finance Man here will tell you. He is the king of finance, okay? I, I'm, I've been following this dude for years, okay? And he never once has advertised some BS, okay? Like these other people who promise. I, do it. I just can't do it. Promise the world. And I'm like, that is like such BS. Like, I just can't stand it. But it is what it is, you know? And, but. This is all and it's crazy because like I was talking to somebody the other day during a consultation yeah. and they were telling me you have to go through like 10 credit repair people to finally find a solid person. He's like, I finally found you. It only took me 10 other people to find okay. you. I said, wow, well, I guess thank you, you know, but I only have room for so many people. So I can't take on every person that I talk to, unfortunately. And a lot of people I turn away and I'm like, dude, it's not the right time. Like, no, it's not going to work right now for us. Like, but here's what I need you to do. And then come back in a couple months and maybe you'll be ready then. But I can't help people that are behind on their bills. They, they're, you know, they can't even pay their car note. Their credit cards are behind. Um, at, at that point, you know, you just need to get your bills paid up, get caught up. You got to get yourself in order because yeah. now you're, no matter what I do for said person is, you so out of whack with everything that's going on in your life. It just, it's going to bring a headache to, yeah. to, to us. And it's like, it's enough of a headache doing personal yeah. credit as it is. Yeah. So if I'd rather be selective, you know, to your point, than just taking on any and everybody. Cause, and you know, like for me, for example, like I have different packages, right? So mm -hmm. I started this thing probably like, <laughs> It's funny. I started this thing. I call it the, um, like the headache. Like I keep track of like the headaches per package. Mm -hmm. The most expensive packages. No headaches. The most expensive package, zero headaches. Yep. The least expensive one. All, all headaches. headaches. All headaches. All the headaches. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like. I know. But, it's crazy. And, you know, sometimes I hate to be that person that tells you what you don't want to hear. But, you know, I got to keep it real with you because if you knew better, you would do better. And I give you the information that you need to know, not what you want to hear. Um, so sometimes, you know, temporarily, we might need to work another job. We might need to, you know, bring in additional income, whether that's DoorDash, Uber Eats, there's so many different ways that you can make income temporarily with right. a lot of these different apps, surveys, but you need to work 
to get some debt paid off, okay? Sitting around and complaining about it and wanting to pay someone to make it all go away is not realistic anymore, okay? You need to get up and you need to get working, okay? Get a second or third source of income and start getting some of that debt at least caught up, okay? At least caught up. up. People, but... You know, with social media, nobody wants to work anymore because yeah. it's like a bad thing to have a job. It's you know not. It's I, not a bad it, thing to have a job. I Right now, in the economic times that we're in, you need to have a job, possibly two jobs. And there is a ton of tech jobs out there that are work from home, okay? Mm-hmm. There are a ton of places that hire work from home, so there's no excuse Put you a resume Nobody together. To right. Nobody right. has to know what you do. You just, just get yourself in order. You know what I'm saying? And everybody isn't an entrepreneur. That's the other thing. Right. Right. Everybody isn't built to be an entrepreneur. And you know, that's fine. It is to be an entrepreneur. Like, it it's is. very hard. It's very lonely. It's very stressful. Um, you know, I have good days and I have bad days, but I've been doing this since 2019. And, um, you know, it's, it's been very challenging. It's very, you know, expensive because you have to pay for so many different things. And when they say it takes about five years to really get your business going, that is no lie, right? Because I'm in about year five right now and it's, it's, you know, a lot of work. It's a lot of of work and i've had Listen, to learn a lot of a tasks space, you gotta you know you're gonna do trial and error yeah on these different systems you want to try this mm-hmm. one may may not work but i had to pay for it to see right and then you, like you said in the beginning you just going off of what you see we want to mm-hmm. add on this we're doing that it takes a lot of money to to start and operate a business yes um you know now we've smartened up because of the trial and error mm-hmm. and lived through the mistakes that we made along the way so we we know better now right but but even still there's still expenses to run any business so yeah. you know um you just gotta have your stuff in order yeah everybody isn't meant to be an entrepreneur somebody has to work the jobs out there for yep you know, and, you know, just, and it's okay to do both. It's okay. If you want to start a business and you want to have a side hustle and you want to work full time, that's perfect as well. Don't let anybody tell you different because you're going to need to fund your business before it stands on its own two feet. And that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. So let's get into it. Um, again, thank you guys so much for watching because I'm telling you guys, your engagement helps my channel grow and I greatly appreciate it. But be first, first, before we actually get into the nitty gritty, I want to break down the different types of bank accounts and financial institutions that are out there. A lot of people just think banks are banks, which There are a number of different banks, thousands and thousands of different banks, but we want to understand the different types of banks and how these banks are categorized. So there's actually nine different types of banks. Who would have thought, right? It's like, where do all these different types of banks come from, right? So there's central banks and these are banks that pretty much don't offer any products that we would want. So you're not going to really be with a lot of centralized banks because they are mostly, they play a role in the economy by regulating the money and supply and adjusting the interest rates and all of the, you know, stuff that we don't really care or have too much control over, right? I won't say care, but we don't really have too much control over that. And um, the Federal Reserve System is also included in 12 independent districts operating nationwide. So not too much fun stuff to talk about with central banks. Um, You know, there's really not much to it. The second one we have are national banks. So national banks are going to be more of like your Bank of America, your Chase, you know, your average banks that you're going to see on every street corner when you go down the road. 
Um, national banks are great, you know, but you also want to have a diversified profile when it comes to banking. You don't want to be monogamous to just one bank. Um, what do you think? I mean, what is your, what is your opinion when it comes to national banks? Um, like you said, national banks, you know, obviously they serve their purpose because they're all over, you know, our mm -hmm. country in most, in most cases. So it's good to have a few, um, <clears throat> you know, cause most people probably their first bank accounts are going to be with a national bank yeah. for the most part. Um, so you already have that relationship established, you know, with a Chase or a Bank of America or, you know, one of the other bigger national banks. Yeah. And that's cool. But I like you say, I like to tell people um, what I do tell people most of the time to, you know, diversify, you know, the type of institutions you have mm -hmm. um, for your national banks, your local credit unions that offer, you know, both personal and business credit products. Absolutely. Um, we want to actually benefit from these banks because every dollar we put in our bank accounts, they definitely benefit from so you definitely want to, you know, again, have your credit right so you could then turn in and benefit from them just as much as they benefit benefit from us. So, um, you know, national banks, one or two is cool. Um, you know, your local credit unions that offer the products that we want and, um, you know, any type of institution where we can benefit from it. Absolutely. I totally agree. I mean, they all have their purpose. You know, Chase is really popular for some of their credit cards. They're known for giving high limit credit cards on the business side, but they are a little bit more strict when it comes to credit requirements. So that's another thing that you have to consider. If you are going to be stepping into a national bank, you want to make sure that your credit score is at least a 720. I used to say 700. Sometimes I might have been on the verge of saying 680 a few years ago, but times have changed. It's it is damn near 2024. OK, <laughs> and by the time that you're watching this video, it probably is 2024. So in this day and age, past covid, you know, post covid, we really need to understand banks have really tightened up their grips. They're becoming a lot more stricter. They're wanting to get better qualified candidates who are less risky. So if yeah. that takes, you know, waiting a couple months for you to get funding ready to get that score up and just adjust a few things, mm -hmm. make sure that you don't have balances on more than, you know, maybe two cards at most when you're applying for funding, you know, these are some of the things that you are going to need. And um, I'm getting ready to do another podcast where I'm going to be talking about getting funding ready. So make sure that to, to look out for that. But yeah, national banks are great, convenient. Um, but, you know, you want to definitely diversify your profile. Number right. two are local banks, also known as community banks. And this is what he was actually just talking about is getting with those community banks. Why? Because they have an invested interest in helping the local community grow. So they're going to, they actually have an allocated amount of funding that they can give to their community, to business owners, to help business owners grow their local business because they're pouring back into their local economy. So these are really great banks to start with on the personal side and then build that relationships to transfer to the business side. You know, just like King Finance Man was saying, it's all about relationships with these banks. And we're going to be going over some of the really great, you know, local community banks that are on our top 200 list here. Um, what, who are some of your favorite local banks? Um, here in Florida, um, I would say um, Suncoast Credit Union. Oh, that's a popular one. Yeah. Yeah, that's Suncoast a good one. is really good for us here. Um we have, and they may be more regional, but um, but Grow Financial is another one. Uh, Grow Financial, and the reason I like these banks because they have some of the lowest interest rates on all products. Yeah, that makes Grow a financial, huge difference. Huge right, difference. Right, huge difference. Grow Financial, Suncoast, and I'll say one more of my favorites that is more local here to us. Um, uh, at the top of my head, um. 
Do you I mean, guys I like have truest, truest out there? Yeah, we have. I was gonna say truest. truest definitely more of a regional one, but yeah. um, down here in the south. But <clears throat> truest is definitely another one. See, truest was a combination of um, BB and T. Yeah, and BB and T. I I remember yeah, when BB and T was real popular, and then um, what was it? B. What was the other one that was BVT or something? BVAA or something? Yeah, it was some, yeah, yeah. Something like that. yeah, I had them out here and then I was going to get them on the business side and I was like going through the process of getting the, the BVAA and all of a sudden it like just stopped and I stopped hearing from them and I was like, dude, what is going on? I tried to reach out to them. No one was responding to me and they ended up actually merging um, with so B V A A is all these B's B V A A and B T and T, right? <laughs> they merged and became uh truest and there then... was one more they merged with too. Sun oh, Trust, actually. What what was the third one? Sun Trust. Oh, Sun Trust. Wow. And they all merged. Wow. So you know, that's truth. why so many people have been getting funding with them lately and truest is like an equifax bank so they pull equifax on the personal side and they also pull equifax business on the business side so that one has been really that bank i should say has been really popular for a lot of people getting both personal funding and business funding of course if you have your credit right and they're they're a little bit more lenient with the Very credit lenient. score. So that's why I, I like them as well. Right. And and they're one of the more linear ones when it comes to no docs as well. Yes. So yes. You're, if you're not going over if you're not going over fifty thousand with yep. truest, they, they really won't ask you for as long as you're buttoned up. I always use the term button up. Yeah. You have you got as long as you're buttoned up correctly, they're not gonna ask you for any docs under under fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. People have to understand how to look good on paper, you know, and that's what he's talking about being buttoned up. You got to make sure everything is sewed up mm. on your paperwork, because if you don't look good on paper, they're going to start asking questions. That's the last thing that you want to do. Think about this. Banks are a business. They need to lend money to make money. So it's not like they're not trying to give you the money. They just have to make sure that you look good on paper. Banks are very old school in a sense. And, you know, credit and banking has been around for over a hundred years. So this is something that sometimes we have to look at from a different angle in the world that we look at, world that we live in now, because we live in such a microwavable world where everything is like super fast paced, you know, social media, TikToks, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, like we lose interest after what, five seconds. So we have to really retrain our brain to think, okay, how can I make sure that I look good on paper? You need to go through that checklist. And, um, you know, if you're just not sure how to do that, reach out to one of us so we can help you. Because if you don't look good on paper, you are not going to get funding, my friend. Okay. Right. And that's one thing that we are trying to help you with is to get the bag. We're giving you all these banks to get a bag with, but you have to look good on paper and you have to make sure that you're funding ready. And if you don't know what that looks like, reach out to one of us. You can DM us on Instagram. I'm at credit coach, Nicole Scott, and I'm at King underscore finance, man. Okay. Make sure to follow us guys. All right, next. I got to have... ask you, though, before we go, I got to ask you. Sure. Because y'all got a lot of banks out your way, too, so, like, locally. Oh, um, man, what, we have so many three banks. Of your, two or three of your favorite ones out there in, on the West Coast. So, Navy Federal is my number one favorite bank. I'm a huge okay. Navy Federal fan because they have helped me out so much. When they refinanced my auto loan and saved me over $200 a month on my auto loan, I was dedicated to them i was like oh my god this is like a blessing i was just so beyond grateful and i had like a 670 credit score at the time so i was you know not the best but they refinanced me and i was so grateful for that so they do have a few branches sprinkled around northern california the closest one to me is like vallejo so it's or vacaville it's not too close but navy federal 
Um, Golden One is another really good credit union out here. I do like Golden One because even if you have some, you know, not so friendly history, they will give you a bank account. So they kind of are part of the fresh start program. So if you've had issues getting bank accounts in the past, Golden One is really good. And I've also had auto loans with Golden One in the past and they give really good interest rate. Golden One was my first credit union auto loan and it was my lowest interest rate. So it actually made my car payment affordable and that was like the first car payment that I paid in full. And it was like great, great experience with them. And oh man, there's so many. Let me see. Top three. So my third one, I would have to say is either going to be Umqua or First Tech. Those are kind of like the two that are out here that a lot of people don't ever really talk about. I also like City National. So that's kind of cheating and plus one of my best friends works for city national which i'm hey. trying to get her on a podcast so she can come shed some light on their right. funding process because they do so much uh small business loans and it's like some of the information that she talks to me about just when we're chatting is just like man i gotta get you on a podcast so the people can hear this from someone yeah. who actually processes business loan applications it's it's amazing um, but yeah, I would say Navy, Golden One, and either Umqua or First Tech is going to be my choice. They're kind of tied for me. And right. both of them are really great. But of course, I have a ton of Navy Federal videos, which breaks down everything about Navy Federal. So if you guys haven't watched that, make sure to watch it. It's a long video. There's two parts. I think it's like two hours just because it's like a deep dive into Navy Federal. But um, yeah, so the next is commercial banks. Now, sometimes banks can be more than one category. You might have a bank that is a credit union, but also offers commercial banking. So if you're a business owner, you're probably going to go with more of like commercial sided banks. But like I said, a lot of banks like Bank of America, Chase, Navy, all those banks have a commercial side. PinFed does not have like the business side of things. So there are some banks out there that just, you know, specialize in consumer personal um, finance. So commercial banks, we won't get too much into that, but they're more tailored towards business owners. Number five, we have investment banks. So again, guys, a lot of people that are just normal consumers looking for a bank, probably not going to go with some sort of investment bank, but they offer, you know, a number of different things, including equity offerings, tender offerings, financial restructuring, mergers, acquisitions, things like that. Um, so if that would be something that you would need, perfect. Number six, we have the cooperative banking. So those are owned and managed by their members. A lot of credit unions could be considered cooperative banks because they are owned and operated by their members, which is what we want. Because guess what? The more members that they have and the better they are doing, the more funding and the better interest rates we as their members are going to get. So we actually get rewarded by this. So that's why I always tell people never go in this with, you know, a, a bad intention because it's never going to end well for you. You know, a lot of people uh, comment things on my video sometimes and goes, oh my God, this is how you acquire debt. Well, obviously you have the wrong mindset because if you're going in the mindset with, I'm not going to pay this back, you're not going to win in this day and age. You're not going to be able to get funding and then run off on the plug because they will sue you and it's not going to end well for you. It's just not worth it. A lot of times when banks give you funding, it's a test. Like, can you manage a $25,000 credit card? Because that's nothing for them. That's a drop in the bucket. But if you can't even manage a $25,000 credit card, what makes you think that they're going to give you, you know, an auto loan or a mortgage or anything that is hundreds of thousands uh, in credit, you know? So we have to look at the bigger picture here. Don't fuck up a $2,500 credit card over, <laughs> you know, dumb decisions because it's just going to set you back. You know, the goal is to buy properties. The goal exactly. is to invest in businesses. Yeah. 
and do the I was right just going to say that because you never know what opportunities may be, you know, lying in front of you. So this bank gives you a $2,500 credit card and you do right by that bank. And now, oh, six months later, you, you find this opportunity to buy some property in front of you. You can go right back to them because you've built that relationship and kept it copacetic. And now you can get the, the necessary funding that you need to buy this asset that could cash flow yeah. and be passive income for you. So, you know, just do if you borrow money, you know, have a plan in place, like she said, so you can pay it back. Yes. And um, preferably with something that you're cash for. So you're not technically coming out of your pocket anyway. Um, and just keep the relationships good with the bank because their money doesn't run out. Ours may, mm. but there it won't. Yep. So just keep that relationship and always give yourself a chance and the opportunity to use the bank's money. OPM, baby, other people's money. That's what we want to use. But you have to have some sort of income to pay it back. The one thing that drives me crazy is when people come to me, they don't have a job. They, they started a business, but the business isn't producing any income and they want to get all of this business credit <clears throat> and credit. My question to them is how are you going to pay it back? Because the bill, you're going to have a bill in 30 days. So <laughs> when you first start a business, you need to have a job. You need to allow your paycheck to help fund your business until your business can stand on its own two feet. Okay. That's very, very important. It is not easy starting a business and you cannot rely solely on credit when you don't have a source of income. So you really want to make sure you don't shoot yourself <laughs> in the foot. Um, you want to do it very strategically and you want to make sure that you have a steady flow of income to pay it back until your business can. Okay. And that's why you know, new business owners are required to provide a personal guarantee right. until, you know, you're cash flowing at least two mil a year. You know, in some cases it could be a little lower, but generally that's about the mark that they are like, okay, we don't need a PG. Your business is, is okay. Right. And that's <laughs> the other thing because people think going back to the $2,500 credit card you mentioned earlier or your $5,000 credit card. Now, when you get on the business side and you get in, 15, 20, 25,000 or more on these cards and you max them out, y'all better be prepared. I'm telling you right now from experience, you better be prepared for a, a $500 or more payment, mm -hmm. minimum payment. This isn't like your small personal credit, nope. credit card limits. On these big boy um, business credit cards, when you max them out, you better have the income or find a way to pay because they like small car payments at that point. Yep. So if you got two, three, four, five of them and you didn't max them all out, I hope your business is making enough money to pay for them yeah. because you're going to be coming out of the pocket $500 or more minimum balance most times. Yep. I mean, minimum payment to make the payment for their car each month. So just keep in mind, we all want to get the money, but when we use it, we got to have a plan in place to make sure it gets paid back. Absolutely. So... You know, I have this one shirt and I got it because it, it speaks so well to everyone. It says, move at your own pace. And I couldn't agree more with that quote because you can't move so fast. You're going right. to crash and you're going to burn. You need to go slow. Get one thing at a time. Okay. Pace yourself. Don't right. feel like you need to move at somebody else's pace. Everyone is in a different lane. Stay in your lane and go your own speed limit, okay? Don't try to speed up to keep up with those other people over there because that's not your lane, okay? Stay in your lane, do the right thing, be right. smart, okay? Obviously, we can't hold your hands through the process, but we want to educate you guys because, again, if you knew better, you could do better. And you have to understand how to process the concept of credit and co the concept of getting a bag from these banks because you do have to pay it back. It is not free money. It is to help money. you grow. Yeah. And y'all have to understand, too, because I try to. I try to drive this home to people like we're, yes, we do credit. We're in a credit space now, 
but we were once just regular people, just like we still are. Yeah. Um, so it's like we're not coming at you. We're coming at you literally from experience, mm. either something that we've done in the past, good or bad, or and or right now. You know what I'm saying? Like we are real people who still go through these things that we talk about. Yeah. I know me, for example, when I first started really learning about credit and getting these cards, I wasn't the smartest person in using them the way they were meant to be used. Now that just becomes, now now I got bad debt because I didn't use it the way it was supposed to be used. You know what I'm saying? I lived and I learned from it, but I don't want y'all making that same mistake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you get this money, because if you don't have a plan for the money that you get, you're just going to end up wasting it on some stuff you don't even need. Yeah, that is so true. I mean, I went through the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when we when we're all starting to learn about credit, a lot of us join mentorships. We get coaches, we get mm -hmm. mentors, we get people to guide us. That's exactly what I did. I joined a bunch of mentorships. And, um, you know, at that time, um, recession proof was really popular. So they were teaching us all how to get you know, all these credit cards and all these, you know, funding. Um, and that's what I did. I got too many credit cards and it just got out of control. And I was spending too much on ads. And right. before I knew it, I had racked up $15,000 in Facebook and Instagram I ads. Same. Oh my gosh, I did the yeah. same. Just trying to like you said, keep up with everybody else. Keep oh, up do with this everybody crap. else. Yeah. Not even knowing I didn't have to spend that much, right. like that much on ads to, you know, do what we needed to do. But, you know, like we said, we live and we learn. Yeah. So, you know, you really got to go slow and you have to really understand and, you know, yeah. learn from <laughs> our mistakes, you know, sign up for our program so you can not make the same mistakes that we made because I'm telling you guys right now, this information that we're giving you is priceless because I've spent over $10,000 on mentorships and coaches and, and all of that stuff just so I can learn everything. And at the end of the day, you know, you have to take in all the information, process it and, you know, put it out in, in your own way that works best for you. And sometimes that's hard for a lot of people to do is process what is best for them. And that's why a lot of people do need guidance and coaching in that one-on-one -on -one help because everyone has different goals. Everyone's credit profile is different. And mm -hmm. another thing that we didn't even touch on yet is it's not all about the credit score. Um, yep. I've had a number of clients that had have a, I've helped them get a 750 credit score by adding trade lines, but guess what? They still can't get approved for anything because they don't oh, have mm -hmm enough primary credit in their own name. So, you know, it's not just about credit score because you can have what's called a synthetic credit score, which is where, you know, all you have is other people's credit lines on your profile. You don't really have anything that's in your name that shows your payment history. So you got a good score, but you have a really weak profile. And um, that's something that you have to understand is how to structure your credit profile so you can get funding. And guess what? There's nothing fast about that because your credit profile is basically a report of you making on-time payments. Yep. Like I tell people too, what a child's report card is, mm. that's what our credit report is. I was that's just going to touch on that. Heck yes. Exactly. The same, that thing. Ah, yep. man, I couldn't have said it better. All right, let's let's get on. I know we're we just want to give you all this information. But it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. When, it is because we want to give y'all so much game and make y'all understand that, like it's like it is a real process. And like I said, we still haven't even scratched the surface yet, mm -hmm. and we've been just and we're still giving y'all good information. It's... You know what I'm saying? So and it's all like preliminary stuff. Yeah. But um, but it's. When we talk in credit, especially when you get two like-minded individuals that's talking about credit and everything that comes and goes along with it, it's we're gonna try to stay on track, but it's hard because everything goes, you know, everything's connected. So yeah. it's hard to just talk about one specific thing without kind of going on a little little tangent. Yeah, because everything webs out, you know, it's all right. connected. And that's why sometimes we don't need to know everything. We just need to understand the concept of mm -hmm. it and apply it to our needs. And that's what I always tell people. I say, you know, if you are serious about learning about credit, 
You need to be using the time in your vehicles, when you're driving, when you're cleaning, put your headphones in, put your Bluetooth on in your car, listen to this information, listen, learn, and take action. Okay. That's the best advice that I can give you. And if you don't take away anything else from this podcast, understand this. If you knew better, you would do better. Listen, learn, and then earn. Okay. All right. So online banks is number seven and online banks are exactly what they are. They're banks that are online. So if you're someone that likes to take cash out from an ATM machine, probably not going to be the best fit for you. Um, a lot of times interest rates could be a little bit higher because these banks are more of like for riskier individuals, maybe right. someone else that has a hard time getting approved for bank accounts because they have information on their check systems report or their early warning report. I just did a podcast on that. So if you're not sure if you get denied bank accounts, go watch that podcast. Um, but you know, they're not the best banks in my opinion. Um, they're there if you really need to get one. Like for example, a good example of like an online bank is Chime. Um, and that's a very popular bank. It's, it's based out here in San Francisco and anyone can get a Chime account. And now they have all these different credit products that will help you build credit. But, um, I'm not a fan of Chime whatsoever. If someone comes to me and says they use Chime for their bank account, I automatically know that they have issues opening up bank accounts. They don't even need to tell me because there's no reason that someone would need Chime if they are able to open up a bank account with a credit union <clears throat> or something like that. So just my opinion. It seems pretty synonymous with with bad banking history and bad credit. Yep, pretty much. And you know, they're great for the time, but you want to, you know, you want to upgrade eventually right. and, and get away from right. that because this is screaming very much like payday loan ish to right. me, you know, it's like right. not great rates. Um, all right. Number eight is my favorite. <clears throat> and funny enough, my favorite number is eight. So mm-hmm. number eight is credit. My favorite unions. number two. That's, that's literally oh, my favorite man. number. That's so awesome. That is correct. That's my favorite number. Like, yes. Yes. Infinity. So, um, <laughs> you know, credit unions are, I would say my favorite type of banks. I mean, let's just be honest. They have the best rates. They yeah. are pretty much, you know, they're there to serve their members and their members are also like kind of like their owner, the owners of the bank. So, and they all kind of have the same common interest. Like for example, Navy Federal, they serve the military and the military families. So, you know, that's very common. A lot of community banks are credit unions. So, um, and, and they're not for profit either. That's the one thing I do like about them. They don't, they're not in business to like make a dollar off you, even though obviously they are, but they're there to help, um, you know, raise the bar to compete with other banks by offering us lower interest rates, which are going to make our payments lower, more affordable over time. So we don't default. We're not late. Um, just better credit credit products overall, you know? So that's it for, um, oh, I'm sorry. One more savings and loan associations. These are mostly uh, mortgage company banks. They specialize in providing mortgages, although most credit unions and major banks, um, local banks, community banks, or even national banks, most banks are going to be offering mortgages. So like I said, some of these titles could qualify as, you know, a credit union or a national bank or even a local bank, but savings and loan associations are mainly banks that provide mortgages. So not really something that we're too interested in because we can get that with, you know, the banks that we're going to get. So let's get into it guys. Um, again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel on Instagram and on YouTube at credit coach, Nicole Scott, 
And make sure to follow my boy, King Finance Man, on Instagram. And we're trying to grow his YouTube channel right now. So I'm going to leave a link below to his YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to it. And he's going to be uploading this video on his page as well. So give him a huge thumbs up, okay? And make sure to share this video with friends, family, text, Facebook, blast this video because I'm telling you, this is the information people are paying for. Yes, right. this video is long, but guess what? We're going to break it down so you really understand how this whole thing works. Because the one thing that I really hate is companies that are charging people 10% of whatever they get you qualified for funding companies. Okay. So basically if you need funding, you go to like a funding company, there's tons of them right. out there and yeah. they literally charge you to submit applications on your behalf. And I, and I just did a video, the credit card stacking video where I showed you guys what they're doing. But yet if they, if you go to a funding company, they're going to be using all of these banks that we're giving you today. They're going to be filling out your application, fluffing your income. Okay and putting a title on there like operations manager or something fancy. But there's not, this is all stuff that you can do yourself. These are all the banks that they go to, okay? If you need to learn how to build a relationship <clears throat> with a bank representative, take them coffee. Send them DoorDash, okay? Everyone That's loves true. a good coffee, okay? That's Butter true. them up and then go sit down with them, okay? You can literally walk right in any bank, and like she said, just start to form that relationship mm -hmm. and, you know, eventually build and grow it. Just like any type of relationship, you get in what you put out of it. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, like those funding companies, she's, she, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, that's all they're doing is literally filling out the applications for you. Some of them have relationships, some don't, you know, whatever the case may be. But if you're the type of person that can take and process information, you can literally do this yourself. Now, if you're the type of person that say, hey, I just want to be hands off, I'd rather pay somebody to do it, fine, you can go that route too. But if you want to save yourself some money, like you can learn these things that um that we're going to be speaking about or just knowing what banks to go to, who they pull from in terms of the credit uh, reporting agencies, and um, you can literally do this stuff yourself. Yeah. And like, if I were a funding company, <laughs> I could tell someone, hey, go to Navy Federal. They get approved for a $25,000 credit card. Guess what? Right off the rip, if I'm charging someone 10%, which is on the lower spectrum of things, normal people are charging like 15%. If I'm charging 10%, I'm going to charge, I'm actually going to charge the card $2,500. So yeah. soon as you get the card, you're going to have a balance because you got to pay the person that helped get you that credit card. That's insane right. to me. Like... <laughs> You're already going in debt. So not to mention that you're probably paying them an upfront fee, $500,000 just to get started. And then you're paying them a back end fee of like 10% of whatever they helped you qualify for. So, I mean, you can literally do this stuff yourself and that's what we're showing you guys today. So even if you can't sit and watch this video for the entire time, cause yes, it's a longer video, but guess what? These are the gems that you need. You need to invest at least an hour a day to learning, okay? When you're driving, multitask, okay? Listen to this information while you're driving because listening to music and things like that, if you're really serious about learning something, you're really not going to learn too much. This is right. information that you can easily listen to while you're driving, while you're working, while you're multitasking and learn so you can elevate and get to the next level. Okay. Just do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. If you've stuck around for this entire video, I cannot thank you enough because I know this one was a long one, but we wanted to make sure that we gave you all of this information we can cover. Now, obviously this isn't all of it, but you don't need to know everything. You just need to understand the concept of credit, the concept of banking and do what's best fit for you. Because if you knew better, you would do better, baby. And that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching.
Of course, if you haven't by now, make sure that you have subscribed to our channels, Credit Coach Nicole Scott on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, King Finance Man at YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, you name it, we're, we are there and we are gonna show up for you guys. So make sure that you have subscribed.